The following broadcast of Houston Arrows Hockey is a UPN 20 Sports presentation. has not been kind to the Houston Arrows this season. And for that matter, neither has been the summit as Houston dropped another home game last night. Two nights ago, the offense exploded for a season-high seven goals paced by a hat-trick from Mike Yo. Tonight, the Arrows look to keep the goals coming in Gund Arena as they try to cut down the Cleveland Lumberjacks next on UPN 20. Live from Gund Arena in Cleveland, Ohio, it's a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Tonight, the Houston Arrows take on the Cleveland Lumberjacks in live International Hockey League action. A very pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to Gund Arena. I'm Adam Gordon. The Arrows, well, they're trying to wind up their three games in three nights with a win they lost last night to the Kansas City Blades. And as I bring in my broadcast partner, Mike Greenlay, Greener, you snuck one in on me last night. Yeah. Glad to have you back. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal. Next time a goalie gets hurt, I'll stay up here and you go downstairs. Not <laughs> even going to happen. But I'll tell you what, there is one guy that is going to be back for the Houston Arrows tonight, and it couldn't come at a better time, and that is Mike Yo. Yeah, Mike Yo sat out last night because of his suspension, but wow, a hat trick against the Atlanta Knights, and he's really starting to light it up, and that's good for the Arrows. Also for the Houston Arrows, they were looking for somebody to step up with the absence of Paul DiPietro being recalled by the Toronto Maple Leafs, and team captain Al Conroy seems to be the fitting man. He certainly is. He's a leader on and off the ice. The guys respect him, and they follow his lead, and he's leading on the ice with 12 goals and 17 assists. It's good to see a captain and Al Conroy really lighted it up. And when you look at the Cleveland Lumberjacks, I guess when you want to talk about a leader, you could talk about a rookie leader on defense. Peter Allen is a great candidate for Rookie of the Year. He certainly is. He's third in rookie scoring behind Bill Bowler of Las Vegas and Konstantin Shafranov of Fort Wayne. He has two goals and 22 assists. And you're right, a Rookie of the Year candidate for sure. Terrific, young, exciting defenseman. And that takes us to our Oshman's game plan. It's brought to you by Oshman Super Sports USA and Greener, the Arrows. Well, they are, them and their opponents have scored 24 goals in the last two games. And I think the key for the arrows is going to be to keep scoring and keep putting the puck on the net and trying to get goals. And secondly, it's know your assignments. I think the arrows get caught sometimes defensively when uh, when they don't pick up their assignments. So that's going to be important. And third, it's don't wait. Get to them early. Get on Cleveland. Don't have to come back in the third period. All right. When we return, Mike Greenlay chats with the head coach of the Houston Arrows, Terry Roskowski. That's next on UPN 20. Tonight's special edition of Saturday Night on Ice is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, by Columbia Healthcare Partners, by Chrysler Plymouth, by Dodge, by Jeep Eagle, and by Whataburger. Welcome back to Gund Arena, and I'm pleased to have Terry Ryskowski, coach of the Houston Arrows. Uh, and uh, Terry, a good win against Atlanta and dropped a tough one last night, but I guess in, in spite of uh, Paul DiPietro's absence, uh, the team still found a way to score some goals. Well, you know, Mike, a situation happens with, with the guy that we really key on to score a lot of goals. Once he's not there anymore, uh, the guys have a tendency to put it on themselves more to go ahead and try to put the offense together. and. And sure enough, the last two games, we scored a number of goals, which is something that really amazed me because I thought when Di Pietro was gone, we'd probably play a more tired, tired game and, and less goals for and less goals against, but it's been just the opposite. You know, uh, the team, it seems like sometimes when they score a lot of goals, they give up a lot of goals. And, and conversely, uh, when they don't score a lot of goals, they don't give up a lot of goals. It seems like two different styles. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of system do you think you want your team to play? Well, the system that wins, obviously, but... Uh, what we try to do, you know, when, once the goals start coming, guys have more confidence in scoring and the game is, is wide open and all of a sudden that guy is not there to come back and play defense and we're more on the charge of scoring instead of on the defense and letting them not score. And occasionally uh, it gets into the run and shoot game for us and, um, and that's what happens when you're scoring goals and you have a little bit of confidence. It's kind of a run and shoot and, um, and right now the last two games has been the same way. Who do you expect in goal tonight for, for you? Well, I'm uh, going to see how, how Gamble feels in warm-up. Uh, I think the, probably the odds on favor would be Dobson right now, and, and we'll see how Gamble feels in warm-up, though. 
Well, thank you very much for your time, and uh, good luck tonight. Thanks, Greener. All right, we'll be back to the Gund Arena right after this. Welcome back to Gund Arena, along with Mike Greenlay, Adam Gordon with you as we get set for the Arrows and the Cleveland Lumberjacks. Three games in three nights, and uh, I'll tell you, I think, you know, that's the other key we never really got into with the Oshman's game plan, Greener, and that was the stamina factor. I think you're going to see some, some shorter shifts tonight from the boys. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a, a big key for them to take short shifts and uh, try and do the job in, uh, in a little bit less time and then get off the ice and get a rest. The fatigue's definitely going to come into play in tonight's game for uh, the Houston Arrows. They uh, ran into some problems here on the ice. They were trying to get their lumberjack balloon blown up earlier, and so they haven't even gotten to the anthem. They're just getting through the starting lineup, so uh, we apologize for the delay, but while we have a moment here, I can go over tonight's scratches. First for the Arrows, Mike Hurlbutt is out. Uh, hopefully, uh, he'll be ready to skate this coming week, and uh, still about two weeks, three weeks before he will see any contact. Kevin Grant with the knee, still a couple weeks. Carl Valamont, boy, I'll tell you what, that was a nasty little uh, gash he took, a, a hit from that puck. Uh, you saw him, How, what's the update on Carl? Well, I, I guess it's, he's gonna be about a week. Uh, he, he took the puck right in the mouth, and it, you know what, it was, it was the way he took the puck and knocked the teeth right out of his, uh, out of his uh, gums, so they couldn't replace him because the bone was smashed, but they'll take do some work on him and he'll be all right. All right, let's send it down to ice level for the playing of the national anthem. got the, the local high school band performing the national anthem and they're expecting a crowd around 10,000 tonight in beautiful Gund Arena. It is home of the Cleveland Cavaliers of the NBA. This is a beautiful facility. A couple of mid-level suites and uh, they do a terrific job here for their hockey team. Let's take a look at the starters first in goal for the Cle or in uh, goal for Houston. It'll be Rob Dobson. He comes in 6, 9, and 2, 4.37 goals against average 87.3 on the save percentage and this will be his third game in as many nights and uh, he got a little bit of a spell uh, last night because the guy to my right gave him a little bit of a break, so hopefully he will be ready to go. In goal for Cleveland, it'll be Philip Deruval, a guy that uh, the, that the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, the parent club of this hockey club, very high on. Deruval has played very well this season, and he comes in with a goals against average of 3.97. For the Houston Arrows, Terry Ruskowski. Trying to snap the doldrums for their last five. They have dropped road record this year, six, eight, and two. But, you know, it's amazing to see Terry in the road record. It's a lot better than it is at home. I don't know why the Arrows have struggled at home. But uh, hopefully they can at least continue with the winning ways on the road tonight against Cleveland. So the Arrows will be wearing their road green uniforms. The Lumberjacks in their home whites. Cleveland is coached by Rick Patterson, who uh, played many seasons in the NHL, played uh, uh, with the uh, Chicago Blackhawks, and uh, also, I believe, had a short time with the Penguins. I can't remember if he's played a couple of, a couple of games with the Penguins, but more known for his uh, work with the Chicago Blackhawks of the National Hockey League. I'll tell you, you know, coming into Cleveland while we got a minute greener here, you know, I was looking at all the signs about the Cleveland Browns, Art Modell and everything. They've got uh, the Cleveland Brown mascot walking the bench right now. And uh, I'll tell you, everything is, and there he is, big dog. And everybody just trying to save the Browns. I tell you what, there are some people protesting in front of our hotel today with the uh, signs and everything like that. Oh. They, had, they had camera crews out there and everything. Yeah, that, that's, 
that's big news here in Cleveland, of course, with such a big city for football, and it's kind of unfortunate something happens. Yeah, it's amazing because, you know, not the big turnout for the Oiler protests, but here, this town's going nuts trying to save the Browns. Off the face off, the Lumberjacks have it in their own end. They'll turn it along the left side. Jeff Christian cleared to the line, not out. Here's Al Conway with his shot. The blocker save made by Deruville. Now the puck jammed along the boards. Yo, who had the three goals against Atlanta a couple of nights ago. Behind the net, Bill Armstrong for Cleveland. Roll one to Rusty Fitzgerald. And he'll jam it along the boards. It's picked up by Jeff Christian. Shot to center ice. And here comes Chuck Callender at center. Up by Yo. Bring it into the arrow end. And there was Miles O'Connor who lost an edge. Puck in front. The shot hammered wide. Boy, I'll tell you, left all alone was Jeff Christian, and he hammered the shot just wide of the net. They grind it out behind the cage, poke to the near side. Yo, he'll turn for Houston in his own end and shoot it out to center and back into the Cleveland end. 45 seconds gone in the first period. No score in the hockey game. Armstrong in behind his net, hits the brakes and turns it around. Quick pass to the near side, and it's Victor Gervais. Lost it at center. Laniel was there, and the arrows turn it around, shoot it back into the Cleveland zone. And Peter Allen, the guy we talked about in the open, what an outstanding defenseman he is. Young kid, too. Played at Yale. So he could be smart enough for both of us, Greener. <laughs> Here's the puck turned around. Arneal trying to move it in, but McElwain, who's just back now from Pittsburgh, hits the line. McElwain looks in front. Center to hit skates, and the arrows. Jakes turns it around. Steve Jakes in his own zone. A quick pass to center ice for Slipchenko with some room to wheel. Slipchenko trying to center one. It came over the line. It's out at center ice, and Brad Lauer chases it down near boards. He's watched by Jakes, who muscles him off the puck. And the arrows are back. Still no score in the hockey game. One and a half gone in this first period. And the puck squirms to center. And it's back into the arrow end. Jakes from his own blue line to Scott Arneal. Trying to move one in. It hits skates. That was turned around by Alexei Krivchenkov. And it was turned back into the arrow zone. McElwain fighting for it. Hauls down. Slavchenko no call. Puck came out in front, but Curtis Hunt knocked it away. Fighting for it along the boards was Dave McCaleck. And here's a shot hammer just wide. As smoking in there was Mike Stevens. So the Lumberjacks have had a couple of chances, but they still don't really have a shot on goal. They've, uh, the bull shots have gone wide. Puck shot down the ice and back to play it. Krivchenkov and the Arrows will have a faceoff back at their own end. The Arrows came out pretty hard and, uh, you know, got, a, got one good shot. Al Conroy blistered one at uh, Deruville and he handled it right into the corner. But then the Lumberjacks, showing why they're so good offensively, came back. And guys like Curtis Hunt have to be sharp to try and uh, keep them at bay. Face-off comes to the left side of Rob Dobson as Mark Freer comes out. He'll center a line with Graham Townsend and a Sylvain Turgeon. As Freer preparing to take his face-off against Oleg Beloff. Clock is controlled by Beloff. Scoots behind him. He's wrapped up near side. Freer's got him locked up. Now the Lumberjacks turning along the near side. Mike Stevens, right point. Worked it down, puck center, Beloff shooting, and Dobson saving, and we'll have our first penalty of the night. And it will be a hook to the Houston Arrows. It might be Gord Donnelly, and the Arrows will be shorthanded for the first time tonight with two and a half gone in the first period, no score. Yeah, that's one thing you don't want to do is get into yeah. penalty trouble against, uh, against the Cleveland Lumberjacks. Right now, they're 10th in the league with 18.3%, and so they'll have to be careful. Like we talked about, they have an offensive scoring punch, and Belov was hooked behind the net by Gord Donnelly as Donnelly was trying to contain him. The puck comes in front, and Dobson get, get, does, can't control the rebound as it pops off his stick, and then Belov's hooked behind the net, so it was really kind of away from the play, and uh, it wasn't really a goal-scoring chance when he was hooked. Well, face off to the right side of Rob Dobson. And out there is Jeff Christian to take the face off. Against Al Conroy. Two minutes up on the board to Gord Donnelly. Off the face off. The arrows have it. Curtis Hunt in behind the net. Scoots one out to center ice. No, it was held in by Peter Allen. Down along the near side. It is Mike Stevens going to the right circle. Scoops it for Belloff. It came down and Dobson covers up. The question is going to ask you about Dauber. You know, Dauber is such a great physical specimen. He's in such terrific shape. You kind of think that a guy like that, maybe three games and three nights isn't really a problem for him. Well, it's, it's, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. I mean, uh, uh, you're right. He is in good physical condition. But I tell you what, it, it does wear on a goaltender more than a player because the goaltender is usually the only one that's out there for, for the whole 60 minutes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be a test for him tonight. And, uh, you, and the good thing is, is he is a well-conditioned athlete, and therefore that will help him. Not controlled by Peter Allen at the right point. He's up, thanks the shot. Jammed it to the left side. The shot deflected on. Dobson in the save, but the puck knocked in by Curtis Hunt. Lead it one.
down to nothing. I tell you what, uh, that's one thing a player hates to do is to deflect the puck in his own net. Curtis Hunt trying to do the right thing and clear it out, but he can't gather the puck as it's shot on goal. Dobson makes a pad save, but Curtis Hunt trying to clear it inadvertently knocks it into his own net. And you know, a smart thing is a shot on net by Basigio and a pad save. And, and the puck came off the pad so hard that, that Hunt tried to gather it in his skates and he couldn't couldn't uh, gather it properly and it bounced off his stick right into the open net and uh, Cleveland Lumberjacks get a gift, I guess, right away. Yeah, I don't know who's gonna get credit for that goal. I think it'll be Basigio. He was the last player for the Cleveland Lumberjacks to touch it and therefore he should get credit for it unless someone else touched it yeah, that's before Nick Dobson. That's what I was thinking. Puck is shot down. And it's going to be Jeff Christian that they say touched it. He will get the goal. Lumberjacks turn it in their own end, and they'll bring it out to center ice. Dominic Pittis all off the puck, and now it is Turgeon turning in his own end. Sylvain so Turgeon passed center ice for Mike Freer. Had the puck tipped away. Lumberjacks turned around, but Miles O'Connor was there. O'Connor hooked off the puck, and by Michalik. Here comes Pittis, smoking left side. The shot, Dobson saving. And the puck goes far side again. It was centered, and O'Connor knocked it down. And he'll spank it out at center ice. Arrows look very ragged here in the first period. They're having trouble getting started. Granted, I'll tell you, Cleveland had the power play here, but boy, I'll tell you, things have been kind of uh, tough for them to get going here. But the Lumberjacks lead it one to nothing, and we'll return right after this. Gotta go is coming two kinds. Not so good. That tooth has got to go. And good. Got the flowers, Mark. Now, when are you sending you? Well, for the good kind, Southwest Airlines has gotta go fares from $19 on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. I'm real lonely. But hurry, because the going isn't always this good. Mom, I gotta go! Southwest, the low fare airline. Here's your wake-up call, nature lover. If that didn't work, try this. Now, for only $2.59 a month, get a classic Jeep Cherokee with 190 horsepower, automatic transmission, quadrilink suspension, and driver's airbag. All for only $2.59 a month, including air at no charge. Now, if that didn't wake you up, try this. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Cleveland, the Arrows turned it out at center ice, and Peter Allen is there. And the Lumberjacks turn it around. It was pumped in there by Callender, and Dobson came out of the net, and here comes Kelly Hurd the other way. Hurd at center ice, shoots the puck into the Cleveland zone. Back to play, it will be Bill Armstrong. He's checked into the boards by Al Conroy, and it's knocked away as one of the Arrows getting tangled up behind the net with Jeff Christian. Puck slammed wide of the net. Lumberjacks there, it was Christian. Muscle off the puck, and Philip DeRuville covers up and holds on. 15.49 to go in the first, and the Lumberjacks lead it one to nothing. There you see Philip DeRuville, and tonight will be a great night for the Arrows. They're really start firing the puck on him uh, he's got those really big goal pads and I tell you what gives up some rebounds that that aren't uh, to his advantage sometimes the arrows get into that mindset where they can fire the puck at the net and go to the net like they did against Atlanta guys like Mike Yo will uh, and uh, Arneal and Lamb will start getting those rebounds and putting them upstairs on uh, Philip DeRuvo. Power play goal by the way at 250 Christian from Basigio and Peter Allen and the Lumberjacks lead a one to nothing. Puck is in the Cleveland zone. Arneal trying to bang it into there, battling with uh, Victor Gervais. It came to Brad Lauer and he'll clear it to the line, not out. Krupke held it in. Hey, the three games in three nights, it's going to be tough for the boys to play physical, but this is where you got to dig down deep, and Krupke using the body well on that last play. Gervais right side. He will turn it his own end and scoot it out to center ice. Miss Lauer with the pass, and it'll go back into the arrow end. Miles O'Connor is there as he is drilled by Gervais. Got the puck ahead. Lauer turning right side, cutting right in on goal. Shoots, goes to the far side. Slipchenko pursues fireboards, boards, poked it out at center, just missing Lamb, and the Lumberjacks are back. Krivchenko. In his own end, bangs one into the arrow end. Curtis Hunt goes to pursue. Hunt in behind the net. Hunt, pass Arneal, tipped it into the Lumberjack zone. This is not icy, it was going to be, it was indicated, and then they waved it off. Back to play, Corey Foster. He's watched by Freer, pulls the brakes on, got it out at center ice. Townsend trying to knock it away. It's picked up by Belloff, sends one into the near corner. 
And there to play it was Hunt. He was run into by Mike Stevens. Puck is clear, but not out. Turgeon trying to dig it out of there. And it scoops out to center ice. Corey Foster swing at far side, and Dave Basigio is there. He'll shoot it into the arrow zone. Dobson makes the catch and dropped it back for Curtis Hunt. Hunt jammed it near side. Turgeon brings it out to center, missing through with a pass. And back Belloff had it tipped away, but got it back. Belloff. The center for Stevens, rolled it ahead. Stevens got it back across the line, looking Michalik, but it was knocked away. And Freer is there. Had it jammed. Stevens sends it back for Dave Michalik. In behind the net. Michalik looking out in front. He's muscled by Donnelly. Centered, but Freer had it knocked away. Loose puck to shot. Great glove save made by Dobson. Snatched that out of there. Arrows can't clear the zone, though. Worked it along the near boards. Belloff trying to move it down, but Hunt jammed it along the wall. And Donnelly turns it around. Center ice, Townsend. He lobbed it into the Cleveland zone, and Corey Foster is there. And he'll move it out at center for Oleg Belloff. Split the D, shoots Thompson. A marvelous left pad save, and he will hold on. 13 and a half to go in the first period. Jacks lead it one to nothing, but Rob Dobson coming up large on a couple of shots. He did make a couple big saves. Of that, that one on Belov, but Belov broke in real quick. But right before that, uh, Freer can't contain it in the zone, and boy, he gets his glove up there quick, and he thwarts that effort. And then Belov, showing some great speed, comes in and he just rips one. But you see Dobson, he's out at the top of his crease. He's cutting down that angle, and he covers up the rebound. I, I, I'm not predicting anything, but I tell you what, right now, Gamble's showing the, uh, or sorry, uh, Dauber's showing the kind of uh, a game he played in Atlanta, and the Arrows are going to need that tonight. Black goes into the Cleveland zone. Darubo had it knocked away, but Yo couldn't get on top of it. He and Peter Allen go at it, skate to skate in the corner. John Collender is there, and Collender skates it up and out of his zone, and here come the Jacks from left to right. Collender through the neutral zone, shoots it into the arrow end. Thompson slows behind the cage and spanks it along the boards. Conroy bumped. And he will finally scoot it out of center. Just missing Kelly Hurd. That would have been a two-on-one the other way. Jacks turn it around. We're exactly seven minutes into the first period. Laniel. It's picked up. Laniel to the near side. Moves to center for Conroy. And Christian ripped it into the arrow end. And Steve Jenks is back. Bumped by Callender. Puck came out in front. But the arrows knocked it free. Here is Conroy, and we've got another penalty coming up to the Houston Arrows, and we'll sort it out when we return. 12.40 to go in the first period. Cleveland leading one to nothing. Back after this. Hey, guys, guys, what do they call this, bud? Ice? It's ice brood. No, it's a bottle, looks like ice. bottle does look like ice. It's an ice brood, Jack. It's a bad head. The bottle is Jake, and it looks like ice. Ice, ice brood. brood, Jack. 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 Side. Okay, Wait, coach. Bud Ice, the official beer of the Hanson brothers. Stupid machine took my quarter. Monday on UPN. Who is he? Where are they? Why are these moments so important? No idea? Better tune in. Somebody help me! Think you remember? Better watch again. It's a classic Star Trek Voyager. Then on Nowhere Man, what is Vale looking at? Why are they hiding? No clue? Better tune in. Get down! Two unforgettable episodes. One unbelievable night. Monday night at 7 on UPN 20. Back in the Gund Arena, Cleveland leads it 1-0 on a power play goal, but the Arrows will have a chance to come back and get their own as there's a penalty on the play. And the power play goes to the, I'm sorry, power play penalty goes to Mike Yo as they'll have a chance to make it do nothing. Yo gets a holding the stick call. Well, now they've added two minutes they, to Rusty Fitzgerald. Have, yeah, I was, I was surprised because at first Yo went to the box and then Rusty Fitzgerald gets one too. So obviously he, he called a, a holding penalty on both of them. Or, uh, we'll see what the call is. Yo gets holding the stick. And here, or, uh, Rusty Fitzgerald. Two minutes for a roughing, is that what he said? I, I couldn't hear it, but uh, yeah, so it's four on four hockey for a couple of minutes. Lamb turns it across the line, looking Slivchenko. Slivchenko busting in behind the cage, looking for a man to pass to, stuffs it in there. Darubo got a piece of it, and he'll cover up and hold on. And you know, Troy Gamble, well, hold on here. We got Slivchenko getting into it a little bit with Alexei Kravchenkov. And Slivy wants to give him the old Dasvidanya left, but that's not going to happen. 
Houston Arrows Hockey is sponsored in part by Bud Ice. Come see the Hanson brothers at the IHL Heritage Game featuring the WHA Houston Arrows and the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team. Bud Ice, proud sponsors of the IHL and your Houston Arrows. So slashing, uh, by the way, slashing the call just to sort it out for Rusty Fitzgerald. Slipchenko doing a good job there trying to wrap the puck around on Daruvo and afterwards gets a little physical in front. Uh, that's a good sign by uh, Slipchenko. It shows that he's, he's getting into the game and he wants to get in there and get his nose dirty a little bit. Face off to the left side of Daruville. Lamb, Slipchenko with O'Connor and Krupke. Puck ripped in there. Daruville will save and it's blocked away. And here is Slipchenko. Slipchenko turning with a wrist shot. That just hooked wide of the net. Puck to the near side. Miles O'Connor slides it down for Mark Lamb. Trying to center one. It was a, a pass. It was knocked away, but Lamb got it back. Mark Lamb. Moving to the top of the slot. And it was poked away, but Lamb got it back. Arrows down one to nothing. Shot 7-3 in favor of Cleveland. Jacks take over at center. Corey Foster near side. Watch by Lamb. Puts one out at center for McElwain. McElwain heading up ice. Leading scorer for this hockey club with 37 points. Turning at center, and he's got some room to rob across the line. McElwain centered. It was pushed away by Jakes. And here comes O'Connor. Slides one to center, but the Jacks are back. 11.25 to go in the first, and here comes Cleveland again. Foster right side, cuts in. Centered one. It was tipped away by O'Connor, and Arneal is there. Scott Arneal turning in his own at zone. He'll move it out to center ice. Arneal through the neutral zone. Hits the Cleveland line. Nice pass. Freer cutting in, but it was poked away by Krivchenkov, and he'll move it to center ice. Krivchenkov, and it tipped away by Lagnon. The arrows turn it around. Freer with Arneal. Freer moving in. Freer can't get the shot away. He was jammed into the boards. Lagnon pinching. He's bumped in there by Pittis. Skate to skate along on the wall. Laniel center, but Arneal couldn't poke it in there. Here is a chance now for Arneal again, but he was ridden off by Dominic Pittis, and the Jacks will clear it. Mike Stevens to center ice. Here come the Lumberjacks. Two on two the other way. Across the line, Peter Allen shoots. It was deflected, and into the near corner it goes. Ten and a half to play in the first. Still one nothing Cleveland on a goal credited to, to Jeff Christian, but it was Curtis Hunt that put it into his own net. Should still be a scoreless game. Locked Rusty Fitzgerald slides it down for Stevens, cutting into the slot. Stevens rolled one near side, moving in. Here's Basigio, the shot stopped. Dobson and the rebound is cleared out at center ice as Dobson makes a nice stop in front and was able to redirect the rebound from harm's way. Puck back at the arrow end. This is Laniel. He'll turn it from right to left. Laniel places it into the Cleveland zone. Back to the near corner, played by Christian. He'll move it up the right wing boards and bang it out at center ice. Picked up by Hunt. Reversed it to Kelly Hurd, who will join us in the first intermission. Kelly Hurd, and it's swept away. And here comes Christian the other way. Three on two, across the line. Collander had the pass in front. Rusty Fitzgerald spins, shoots. Oh, marvelous save by Dobson. Wow. It was like riding the merry-go-round at six flags Astro World, and the next thing I know, the big shot's in there, and Dobbs in the same. Conroy shooting, but the net becomes dislodged, and I think we've got an interference minor coming up to the Cleveland Lumberjacks. 9.33 to go in the first, and the Lumberjacks lead it one to nothing. Good job by the Arrows on that play. Conroy takes the puck all the way in. Dobson makes a great save, and the, the play comes back all the way up the ice. The net's dislodged, and Conroy gets a good shot on goal. He looks pretty lively tonight. Well, you know, you talked about Dobson looking sharp. You think he might want to be big for one other reason. Oh, yeah, he played for this team. Yeah, that's true. He's, he's back in his home territory uh, of sorts, and uh, I tell you what, it, it's always a good thing to come back in your hometown and, uh, and, and really, really do the job. Uh, Dobson making saves right and left here. And here's a good play by Besigio. He doesn't have a lot to shoot at, so what he does, he just throws the puck on net. And what happens is it creates some, some confusion in front. That's what the arrows need to do is start shooting the puck even when they don't necessarily think they can score. You gotta sometimes get a shot just to create scoring chances. Arrows on the power play for the first time tonight. Here is Lamb, slides one down for Conroy. Conroy back to the line, Lamb winding, shooting, hammered wide rebound! And it was swatted away by Daruville. A marvelous save. It is Turgeon. Had it tipped away to the near side. Lauer scooped it to the line. Not out. Here is Conroy. Left side. Wrestled off the puck. Give it to Turgeon. Dancing the point. Cutting in. Turgeon. Ready to go. Great save. Rebound. They score. Grant Townsend. Power play goal. I'll tell you what. I don't think the fire department here 
could douse that flame that Townsend has. It's his ninth goal in such a short time, and it is now a 1-1 game. And what a job by Tonroy at the point along with Turgeon. They work the puck around the top of the point, and they keep the puck in. That's just hard work that created this goal as Turgeon makes a couple good moves, and you know what I said, take a shot on goal and create a chance, and there's Townsend right on the doorstep to fire it upstairs. Townsend's been very effective on situations around the front of the net. He's got a good, hard, powerful shot, and he just blasts that one right through the stick of DeRuville. Well, it almost looked like that was deflected a little bit. Well, it, well you know what deflected off was DeRuville's yeah, stick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He actually got a piece of it, but with the power that Townsend fired that puck with, it went right up upstairs, and it's a tie game, one to one. And the arrows turning at center, Arneal again. Arneal cutting to the left side, drifts one to Hunt. It was knocked away, back to center ice. Here comes Peter Allen. Pass for Stevens off the mark, and we've got to fight the other end. It is a fight between Armstrong and one of the arrows in the corner. I can't see who it is. Is that Slivchenko? No, uh, no, there's Slivy. I know he was out there, but we'll sort it out when we return. 8.41 to go. Jacks won, arrows won. Back after this. your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Even new ways to save. The 96 Buyer's Choice Drive Away. It's your choice. Drive away in the fun to drive 1996 Plymouth Neon and get 1.9% APR or $500 cash back. Right here, right now. This is where you want to be. See what's new at your local Texas Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. guests over for the holidays? Yeah. Then serve them something special, like Popeye's Holiday Pack, 10 pieces of our famous chicken, four buttermilk biscuits, and new cornbread dressing, made with golden brown cornbread and a zesty blend of seasonings. The 10-piece Holiday Pack with new cornbread dressing, only $9.99, only in Popeye's. Tomorrow night at 7, Kane goes after a high school bully on Kung Fu. The legend continues. Then after point Matt, Reno and Bobby go hunting for the legendary D.B. Cooper on Renegade. The posse rides again tomorrow night on UPN 20. 8.41 to go in the first, and Mark Lamb getting, I'm sure, a five-minute major. Bill Armstrong is going to get one as well. He left the ice, but I think he kind of got high stick to the high heavens there. Yeah, Lamb and Armstrong came in there, and Ar Armstrong's not happy at all with that. Uh, he gets a high stick to the face, and he wanted more than just a uh, just an even up call in the fighting. But uh, he's not going to get it. It looks like it's going to be even up, and uh, the arrows and the lumberjacks will stay at... Uh, Stay oh. at, uh, actually, here, let's pick up the call here. I think we got something cooking here. Oh, he got wow. a two-minute instigator. So it is a game of Scott, you know. But he I, got five for fighting. Now, wait a minute. You know, yeah, he got five for fighting, but Lamb gets two for roughing because Lamb wasn't, I, I know it's funny, but it's, it's like, it's like, it's like saying a player okay. fought with himself, but he really didn't. He, he started the fight. He started throwing punches, whereas Lamb didn't. He was more called for roughing because you have to call him for something. So he gets two for instigation. He gets kicked out of the game. He gets five for fighting. Lamb gets two for roughing. So in, in three minutes, or sorry, yep. in two minutes, they get a three-minute major power play. And that's why Armstrong's so mad. I thought it was because he got high stick in the face. Uh, but <laughs> Lamb and the uh, arrows make out good on that one. And uh, in two minutes, a, a three a, a three minute major penalty, if you if you can call it that. Oh yeah, and it's score it well. The arrows can get as many goals. They've just tied it as Townsend gets his ninth from Conroy and Turgeon. Point yeah. <laughs> Sly Turgeon. I'll tell you what, he's a hot hockey player as well because Sly Turgeon's been getting the assists as of late. It hasn't been the goals he's been getting. It's been the assists because he now has three, six, eight assists in his last five games. Rusty Fitzgerald turning it center ice. Worked it back to Sigio in his own zone. And now it is Peter Allen through the neutral zone, across the line, turns, works one to the near side. Here is a chance along the near boards as Fitzgerald cutting in behind the net, stuck one in there and it was turned away. Arrows trying to move the puck out of there. Krupke working his man over and play going on. 
Arrows need to be a little careful. I don't have a problem playing physical, but you know the referee's going to be looking to even things up here as Freer centered one. It was knocked away at the last second by a slating Besagio. Now another penalty coming up, and this is to the Arrows, exactly what we talked about. And it's going to be a hook. And that will, again, negate more time on the power play. Actually, what it'll do for a minute 16 is put the Cleveland Lumberjacks on the power play. And then once that's over, the Arrows will go on their power play. Well, it's in the corner here, and I think Freer is going to get the old lumber in there a little too high and a little too hard, and that is going to cost him two minutes, and it's going to cost his team more on the power play. Well, what he does is he hooks the arm on Fitzgerald and then pulls him off the puck, and uh, that's, an, that's, that's hooking or an interference type of hooking, so Freer uh, is going to head to the box, and like I said, the Lumberjacks will go on the power play right now. And then uh, the Arrows will pick up the rest of their power play afterwards. Yeah, they're not going to get much. So Rob Hurd is our referee tonight. Joe Buzide and Russ Johnson are the linesmen. And uh, Terry Ruskowski can't be pleased about that penalty to Mark Freer. Uh, but now the Arrows have to dig down here and watch the power play. For a little over a minute, Brad Lauer turning in his own end. Works it out to center ice, and it's Corey Foster right back to Lauer across the arrow line. Looks in front of us, poked away by Arneal, and O'Connor spanks it right back down the ice. 7.40 remaining in the first, a 1-1 hockey game. And out there, Corey Foster, we remember him. He's got that big slap shot, so look for him to get the puck at the point. Lauer turned it back to the point. It was jammed away by Hunt. Could he get it to center? Yes, he did. And the Lumberjacks are back. Foster. Give it up to McElwain. He'll turn in his own end, move it out at center ice. In 39 seconds, the power play will be over. We'll be back at four aside. Here's McElwain. Worked at top of the slot for Foster. Fakes the shot. Jammed it down as the Lumberjack setting up on the man advantage. McElwain cutting down right side. Had it in his skates. Had to regroup. Foster. Collender back. Foster. One tight shot and a hammered bullet that went wide. Held in by McElwain at a right point. Top of the slot, Foster. Worked it back to McElwain. The top of the near circle, back again. Here's Foster winding, shooting. Dobson saying, he down, kicks to the near side. And here is McElwain. Crowd wanting a penalty, won't get it though. Here is Lauer, bumped in there by O'Connor. Penalty will be over in three seconds. Here's McElwain, winding, shooting. Dobson again the same, and it's cleared at center. And now Gunas could have a chance. Here's Mel Gunas moving in. He will wait, and then it was poked away. A marvelous defensive play by Dave McElwain. Oh, a terrific defensive play to get back. Hooking down Gunas enough not to get the penalty, and then took the puck away. Back at center. Arrows will be on the power play in 25 seconds. That'll give him about two and a quarter to work with on the man advantage, that five-minute major. And at center, Stevens pass. Here come the Lumberjacks. Fitzgerald going upstairs and then went head over T. Kettle, right over Dobson, and he is slow to get up. Well, Dobson came out in that patented sliding style of his, and Fitzgerald was driving to the net, went right over top of him, and he went head first into the mesh. And then that didn't come off, which makes it uh, kind of like a, well, it's very sturdy. He's shaken up on the play. Here's a look at it as, as Dobson comes out to, to stack the pads. A good job by Jakes to cut him off. And so he goes over both of them. He, Jakes catches him up and he, and he goes right into the post. And uh, I tell you what, the Nets usually move, but he, I guess he, he twisted himself up. He didn't hit it hard enough to really uh, knock the net off, but he hit it hard enough to hurt his uh, shoulder or his head area. And uh, you, he, he's up and, and uh, talking to the trainer, so he'll be all right. But the arrows will go on the power play in 10 seconds. Are the Denver Grizzlies here? There's a bear in the arena. <laughs> Do you see that? Are you There's sure? a grizzly bear in the arena. Are you sure it's not a beaver? No, it's a bear. Look at the size of that thing. Where is it? Oh, it, it's a real bear. I'm talking, it's a real grizzly bear. Oh, I thought bear. you were talking about one of those, one of those, uh, those costume type things. That is a real black bear walking through the thing. I, I don't know what kind of promotion You misunderstood that is. me. I didn't say I was going to buy you an ice cold beer. I was going to buy an ice cold bear. Wow. <laughs> I've seen it all now. Oh boy, they cannot be gems, I, can I they? I tell you what, they so, some places really go the distance in uh, promotions, I tell you. <laughs> a bear walking through the place. This isn't a zoo. Well, sometimes some people think it is. When we're here, when we're here, it's a zoo. Off the face off at center ice. Chris, uh, Christian sends it back into his own end. Five seconds, Freer will be back out on the ice and they'll be on the power play. We're about uh, 215. 
Power play is now on for Houston. 2.15 to work on the major. Turgeon center ice. Had to go back to retrieve. Brings it across the line. Looking for Freer. Knocked away. Batted down by Lanyell. Lumberjacks again trying to clear it. They do. Turgeon turning, but that is offside. So bring the face off back to the center. 5.44 to go in the first and a 1-1 hockey game. So now the Arrows have two minutes and three seconds on the five-minute major. And uh, we'll sort that out, I'm sure. The faceoff will be at center ice. Turgeon stays there with Conroy and uh, Townsend. 2.03, as you say, left in the penalty. That major to Bill Armstrong. And there's a look at Miles O'Connor. You know, this is a guy that at the start of the year kind of got maligned and a little bit by his play, and, and he struggled in the start. But, you know, I talked to Dave Tipp, and he thinks over the last 10 games he's been probably the better of the, all the defensemen. Hey, he's doing a good job defensively, uh, and uh, he, he's a very intense player trying to keep his game up, and uh, you, you know that he'll give you his best effort every night and throw some toughness in there for you, too. He, he know, you know, he does make the odd mistake, but everybody does. It just seems like when he does it, everybody seems to notice it. But, you know, the thing is, is he has made some terrific plays for Houston as of late. He is really moving the puck well all of a sudden for the Arrows. Puck controlled by Jenks at a right point. Slides it down for Turgeon. Looped it into the corner. Peter Allen was there. Jammed it along the boards. And Townsend imprints him like a visa into the corner. Here's his shot block. Rebound score! Al Conroy! And it is another power play goal. Arrows lead it 2-1. And they stay on the power play. Al Conroy gets his 13th goal of the season, and you know who's causing trouble in front of the net there was Graham Townsend again. I tell you what, he's doing a great job in front of that net, and uh, you'll see that on the replay. I tell you what, Tershawn again fires the puck, makes something happen, and then there's, uh, I think it was, I think it was kicked to Conroy by Townsend. Yeah, I hope Townsend, he gets an assist on that. He, he should because he, he, I think he did kick the puck. Uh, Deruville was on his knees, so he couldn't recover, and uh, Townsend just kicks it. And I tell you what, Conroy had nothing but an open net to shoot in, and he buries it. It's two to one arrows with 133 left in the five-minute major. Jakes and Townsend get the assist, and the arrows lead it to when they stay on that major to Armstrong. They're on the power play. I'm surprised that Turgeon didn't get an assist there because he's the one who shot the puck. Well, but Jakes had it, and so does Townsend. Jakes was the one that started it from the point. Here is Harnia, left side, drifting it back to the line. Miles O'Connor. A quick pass down the shot off the side of the net. Arrows trying to move it out in front. It was swatted away, picked up again by Slivchenko. Base in the left circle. Slivchenko trying to reverse it down for Arneal. He's bumped along the boards, though, by Rusty Fitzgerald. And they continue to grind it out. Here come the Lumberjacks to center ice, and it's Christian that shoots it into the arrow end, and Dobson makes the glove save, and he says, I'll clear it myself. Out to center, and the Arrows will bring it up ice. Arneal across the line. Arneal rolls it to Freer, looking in front. Freer pulls up in the circle, and and he looks for the pass. Here is Laniel. Laniel along the boards, looking down low, but it's tossed away into the far corner. This major to Armstrong is just about over. It's down to 35 seconds. Plenty of time if the Euros can set it up. They can't, though. And Rusty Fitzgerald does a nice job to poke it down the ice. Vadim Slivchenko at center ice, or a pass that comes to Laniel. He'll move it to center ice. Long lead pass goes in. Conroy after it. If he gets there, he'll negate the icing. He's in the corner. Conroy, base to the left circle for Laniel. Looks in front. Power play down to 15. Laniel, top of the slot, drifting back to a right point. And he hammered it down along the boards. Arrows are there. Yo poked it to Conroy. Grind it out in the corner. Here's Yo. Yo behind the net. And then he sends it back, and Mike Stevens is there. The power play is over, and teams are at five aside. Stevens giving Kelly Hurd all he can handle behind the cage. Stevens knocked it away. Here comes Mike Stevens to center ice. Three on three. Stevens a pass across the line. It's Pittis got by Jakes in on goal. Centered it out in front, and then it was tipped away. Pittis still with it, though. Pittis dangling like a pair of old fuzzy dice from a 65 Chevy to the line. The shot beats a by Thompson, and he will hold on and will take time out. 3.15 to go in the first two one arrows back after this. Sega Nomad plays all 16-bit Sega Genesis video cartridges. And if you're not going to Toys R Us, the one and only store that sells Sega Nomad, you might go mad. Lower prices, bigger selection. Guaranteed. You've been holding back all year. Isn't it about time you did something good for yourself? Like stopping by your Chevy Geo dealer during the year in countdown and getting low 4.9% APR financing or an affordable smart buy on this fabulous Chevy Lumina. 
and includes great features like the standard dual airbags, room for six adults, and powerful V6. And that's just for starters. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can enjoy today. Chevy's year-end countdown ends January 8th. If you're not getting the low, low Toys R Us price of $29.99 for the Fisher Price tape recorder, then you could be singing the blue. I really blew it because I paid through the nose. Lower prices, bigger selection. Guaranteed. Our boys at the Houston Arrows are in the midst of an all-out pro hockey war. You can support the war effort. The Houston Arrow War Bonds are on sale now. War Bonds are $10 ticket vouchers and booklets of five. They're redeemable for tickets to the games you want to see. A perfect gift for the holidays. Also on sale. Also on sale are pro-rated season ticket packages. 627 Arrow is the number to call. A shot hammered wide by Lauer. We're at even strength, five of five, and it's Turgeon. And he'll turn one to the line and down at center ice and back into the Houston Arrow end. It is controlled by Gord Krupke. I'll tell you what, it's great to see him back in the lineup after missing 31 games with shoulder surgery. Now a chance, Townsend a shot, deflected away. Freer trying to loop one out in front, but it was tipped away by Lauer, and out at center ice, it's Miles O'Connor ripped it into the, into the uh, Cleveland zone. Ooh, took so, take a weird hop off the side of the net, and it's controlled. It would not have counted had that puck gone in because the arrows were off sides, though. The arrows were trapped in the zone, so it was a nice idea, but if it would have gone in the net, it wouldn't have mattered. Puck along the boards. Malgunas trying to wrestle it away. Now Krumpke in there with Lauer. Dip behind for McElwain. Looks in front for, Dom or for Victor Gervais. Here's a chance now. McElwain centering one, and Dobson ooh, couldn't cover it up, and the puck came down. The shot hit Dobson. Bang away at the rebound, and Dobson is there. Tell you, Dobson kind of looked herky-jerky. There was a, showed a little indecision on his part, but he got the job done with 2.13 to go in the first, and the Arrows lead it 2-1. Well, I think, I think what happens is the puck comes out front, and it doesn't really come all the way, so Dobson can't cover it up. So now he's caught, and he has to dive over to the far side, and now he's really caught because he's, the puck comes right out front and does a good job in scrambling. I tell you what, that makes, that makes a difference between a, an average goalie and a, and a great goalie, sometimes the way he scrambles. Next telecast coming up on UPN 20 in the Arrows Broadcasting Network. It'll be December 28th from the Omni in Atlanta. The Arrows in the Atlanta Knights, 6.30 p.m. And uh, I think one of the promotions you're going to take on Sir Slapshot. Take over where Don Jackson left off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Here is Scott Arneal. Trying to clear the puck, cannot Christian knock it down. Back for Rusty Fitzgerald, kind of back Christian. Shooting, stop, rebound, stop, rebound, stop again. Another shot, oh, great save. Crowd thought it went in. And I don't know what we're gonna get here. If I were Keith Jackson, I'd be going fumble. They're diving on top of everything there. The puck is in the net. It's behind Dobson. There is a delayed penalty. And, and Donnelly's hurt, or is Don, they're just fighting. I thought yeah, like, Donnelly's, they're trying to drag him off of, uh, I'm not sure who's laying there. You know what, I think it might be Christian, because Christian was jamming away at it. And, uh, and I, yeah, it is Christian. He was, is it going to be a goal? Well, I don't know. He was jamming away at the puck in the crease, and uh, Dobson was down, and they kept jamming away at it, and finally the puck ends up in the net. I don't know whether they're going to count it because everyone was laying on top of Dobson. I guess it comes down to whether the referee is going to call that Donnelly pushed Christian on top of him or whether Christian did it himself. I think Christian just drove to the front, and then once he was in the crease, I think that's when Donnelly pushed him down. And, uh, that, and then Dobson was already in the net, and the puck somehow found him. But they're calling it no goal as I, there was someone in the crease, and, and that usually results in a penalty if the player's in the crease in that situation. But uh, it's going to be an interesting to see how they call it. Donnelly is not leaving the ice very gracefully right now. He is very upset, screaming at the bench. And again, we take another look at it for those of you watching on UPN 20. Well, you see the scramble in front, and the shot's taken by Basigio, and, by, and it goes in the net. You see Callender uh, cheering there, and Donnelly was on top of Christian in the net, and, and I think they just blew the whistle because Christian was in the crease, and Donnelly gets tossed. Let's, let's see if we can get the call there. He gets a 10-minute misconduct, so two for rough, two for hold, and a 10-minute misconduct. So the lumberjack.
Jacks are going to be on the power play, five on four for a couple of minutes, and Terry Ruskowski tried to voice his displeasure. And I'm not sure about the, uh, how that call works because uh, if the penalty was on Do Donnelly, why isn't the why is the goal disallowed? Because the whistle had already sounded. Okay, then that that explains it. Because I was going to say if it was if it was because uh, Christian was in the crease, then Christian should get a penalty. But but yeah, if the whistle went already, then uh, I can see why. And so Donnelly will be off for the rest of the period. There's a minute 58 left, so uh, essentially they'll have two minutes now and two minutes at the beginning of the third, and Donnelly won't be back until have midway through the third with a 10-minute misconduct. So uh, he'll get. He'll get a rest. I don't know if that's good or not because, of course, he'll probably stiffen up a little bit and get a little cold, but uh, the Arrows will have to come back, and the defenseman there is going to be even a bigger factor for them as far as fatigue-wise, losing Donnelly for the next 10 minutes. Black is at center ice, and Corey Foster rolled it into the arrow end. To the near side, it is O'Connor, and it goes all the way down the ice. Out of the net, it's Philip DeRouville. He'll give it over to Dave McElwain. Center ice, Jock Collender. Right through center ice. He'll shoot one ahead for Lauer. 129 to go in the period. Arrows lead it 2-1 to one on a couple of power play goals. Conroy bumping along in there with Lauer. Little Jack's trying to dig it out in there. Collender bumped by O'Connor, and Lamb shoots it ahead, but it's turned around by Cleveland. McElwain. A lead pass, Foster. It goes to the near side. Fitzgerald bumped it ahead for Collender. Yo shovels his man off the puck. A nice play by Yo. And Krumpke smokes it to the line. McElwain couldn't hold. And now Lamb off to the races. I don't think Lamb realized, plus he was late in the shift, that uh, he could have gone after that thing. Buck is back into the Cleveland zone. Corey Foster left to right. Pass center ice. Knocked away by Yo. Good job of forechecking. Oleg Bell off for Cleveland. Shoots it into the arrow zone. Jammed it down in the corner. It is Christian. But swept away. Jakes to the line. Not out. Held in. Peter Allen. Winded. Shooting. Deflected. High over the net. 35 remaining in the period. Freer. He's run into by Mike Stevens. Slides it down for Christian. And it's finally controlled by Houston and banged all the way back to center ice. Peter Allen sends it back. Allen from left to right. 20 in the period. Pass near side. Christian swept away down the ice by the Houston Arrows. And it was Scott Arneal. Back is Besigio. He'll turn in his own end. Dave Vesigio got it ahead. Oleg Belov across the line, and Arneal will shoot that down, and that'll be the period. Three seconds left, and back is Peter Allen, and the horn sounds, and the first period is history. So the arrows, really, Rob Dobson hasn't allowed a goal. Uh, you have to credit, but Curtis Hunt, that guy right there, did score the only goal, and I know he, shake, he shook it off pretty well, came out and played a pretty good period after that. Oh, it was really solid. I mean, uh, you know, it's one of those inadvertent things. It, it goes off his stick like it could have gone off his knee or his, yeah. or his or shin pad. So it, it really is an inadvertent thing, and you can't you can't fault anyone on it. It's just a circumstance. But the Arrows rebounded back really well and scored two unanswered goals, and it's a 2-1 hockey game. Tough break for Curtis Hunt, but as you say, 2-1 Arrows, and we will chat with Kelly Hurd right after this. This is going to be a very special holiday season at Whataburger. Orange and white stripes, great time, come on in. The burgers will be hot and fresh. We're going to take care of them. The prices will be just right. Feed a whole family of four for under $10 is doing pretty good. <laughs> and as our gift to you, you can get one of these cuddly Coca-Cola plush bears for just $2.99. Hello, bear. It's a little good time to spend together. <laughs> good food, good friends. This holiday season, only at Whataburger. What you wait and enjoy. Let's look at the Magnum Power sales event one word at a time. Magnum, as in Magnum engines, as in Dodge Dakota pickup, a little bigger, a lot better. Power, we're talking Dodge, overall the most powerful line of truck engines on the planet. Sales, how about up to $3,000 off Dakota? An event, well that means this special offer ends sooner than later at the Texas truck stop, the new Dodge. There's so much in this country that belongs to everyone. No matter how different we are, we all have something in common. There's a thread that weaves us all together. It's me. It's you. It's Tommy. The new American fragrance from Tommy Hilfiger. Available at Dillard's. 
on UPN. It's a side of Christopher Lloyd you haven't seen. <laughs> the psycho side. And a side of LeVar Burton you haven't experienced. The killer side. They're joining forces on the next Deadly Games. Then, on Live Shot, it's a side of television news you haven't seen. The sexy side. Do these reporters have a passion for their profession or what? Oh, God. Live Shot. Tuesday night at 7 on UPN 20. Welcome back to Cleveland. Uh, Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay and uh, 2 1 hockey game in favor of the Houston Arrows in a terrific period. Rob Dobson was spectacular. He certainly was. Uh, Dauber came up with some big saves, the kind of saves that hey, you need your goalie to come up with to, to have a good game. And, and uh, you know, and the defense rallied around him and uh, you know, cleared the puck out for him. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, is after the Arrows gave up that one goal, the tough break for Curtis Hunt, they really rallied around their troops. The power play looks terrific. It certainly does. It's third in the league on the road and I tell you what they're really doing well on the road on the power play and they fired a couple in there real quick good job by guys like Townsend and Conroy in front of that net and I tell you what what caused those what caused those goals were good good plays by guys like uh, Terjean to fire the puck on the net and create scoring chances yeah and, and you know that's one thing Terry Ruskowski has been looking for the offense is definitely returning you know coming into tonight's game the Houston Arrows were they had scored 12 goals their opponents had scored 12 goals and what I think Terry was looking for was mi offense mixed with defense he got it in that first period he certainly did I mean, like I said, when you get the guys uh, going around the net and causing trouble in front, uh, the thing, things like things are going to start happening, and they certainly did start to happen when guys are firing the puck in the net and getting some pressure on guys like Darubal. Is this their third game in three nights? It looked like it's, it. It's, it's hard to believe that because the, the way that the way the guys uh, are skating right now, and there's a little bit of physical play, especially in front of the net. It's good to see guys like Gord Krupke. He's really throwing the body around out there well. He's and you know, when, eventually when we get guys like Kevin Grant back, it's going to be a really physical defensive core. And, uh, and that's what's going to help the Earls. Well, you bring up a good point. I mean, no Kevin Grant and, you know, Mike Hurl, but will hopefully uh, be ready. I understand Kelly Hurd is ready and Kelly's standing by. Kelly, welcome. Uh, he's not ready. I'm sorry. I, I we, we have someone uh, some chasing him down. Oh, right okay. Wait, okay. Um, but anyway, while we've got a minute, then let's talk about the defensemen that are returning. Hopefully Mike Hurl, but shortly. Uh, and at that point, uh, you know, when we get him back and Kevin Grant and a healthy defense, it's going to be terrific out right, there. Right, and of course, Valamont, we, we talked about him earlier. He'll be back in, in about a week. We, we talked about he, that injury to his uh, jaw. Of course, Hurlbut will be back. That'll be a big addition because we really haven't seen much of him. All we saw was three periods of Mike Hurlbut, and Kevin Grant will be back in a few weeks. So uh, there's going to be a lot of decisions have to be made uh, in, in, when uh, we do get some of those defensemen back. Yeah. All right, Arrows are leading it by a score of 2-1. We'll have more right after this. The game has begun, and the clock is ticking. But in this arena, the most explosive game in town isn't on the ice. Tonight, 17,000 hockey fans have been taken hostage, but only one of them knows it. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Sudden death, rated R. Starts Friday, December 22nd at theaters everywhere. Don't miss the Super Weekend Sale at Macy's. Save 20 to 50% now through Sunday. The right gift for everyone on your list at a price you know will be right. The Super Weekend Sale. Make it special. Make it Macy's. The Christmas Cookie. You can get this little goodie any way you want it. And the Stocking Hung With Care. Any way you want it, you got it. And any way you want it is how you get stuff at Remco. Like this 19-inch RCA Color Portable TV. And this home theater system from JVC and Paramount. Pay for it weekly, monthly, any way you want it. Uh, no big bow, though. We just do that for commercials. Quality name brands made affordable. No credit or deposit required. Remco, your go-ahead-and-get-it store. You've been holding back all year. Isn't it about time you did something good for yourself? Like stopping by your Chevy Geo dealer during the year-end countdown and getting low 4.9% APR financing or an affordable smart buy on this fabulous Chevy Lumina. It includes great features like their standard dual airbags, room for six adults, and powerful V6. And that's just for starters. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can enjoy today. Chevy's year-end countdown ends January 8th. Can Kane stop a street gang from taking over a high school? You have one more test on the next Kung Fu. Saturday night at 7 on UPN 20. 
UPN 20, the first network for the next century. We're back in Gund Arena. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlee. A 2-1 hockey game. The Arrows lead. In fact, it's three power play goals tonight. The Arrows with two power play goals. The Lumberjacks with one. And by the way, the Lumberjacks will still have a couple of minutes. In fact, 2-0-2 to start the second period of a power play. So penalty killing will be key for Houston to keep this lead. Oh, it certainly will. Uh, the Arrows penalty killing on uh, overall isn't as good as their power play is on the road. And so uh, they've, they've done a good job thus far tonight clearing the front of the net and clearing rebounds. But uh, they're going to have to continue to do that job as uh, the rest of the game goes on. All right, let's take a look at that scoring summary, and it started with Jeff Christian. Really, it was Curtis Hunt that tipped the puck into his own net, but Christian gets credit for the goal at 250. Dave Basigio and Peter Allen get the assist, and the Lumberjacks let it one to nothing. But here come the arrows on the power play. Graham Townsend, ninth of the year at 1059 from Turgeon and Conroy. Hockey game was tied at one. And then the arrows again on the power play. Al Conroy. At 1446 from Graham Townsend and Steve Jakes, and the Arrows lead it by a score of 2 1. Well, where are we? Let's see, today is what, the 15th? We're 10 days away from Christmas. What are you going to do in the, during uh, the time off during Christmas? I have to do some Christmas shopping. Right. <laughs> I haven't done any Christmas shopping yet. Oh, and, uh, Amy's you know, watching. She's. Uh, I, I tell you what, uh, you know those people that they talk about that they always leave it to the last <laughs> minute? Well, I'm one of them. And so when we get home, I'm right back to the mall. Yeah, so. I, I do my Christmas shopping on the 26th. I, I'm usually pretty, very late. But you know what? I had a chance to talk with some of our hockey players, the Houston Aaron's, about what they were doing for Christmas. Here's what they had to say. Well, I think my parents are going to come down for one. I'm going to spend some time with them. They're down from the 6th to the 12th. And I think uh, just get together with the teammates. Uh, we, we just have the two days off, uh, 24th and 25th. So I imagine we'll get together with the guy. You know, my wife's uh, family comes in the day after Christmas. But, uh, you know, we're big Christmas celebrators at our place, especially back in Canada. But, you know, not able to get home. But we do our best. Uh, last year was probably the toughest one we've had because it's the first year we've never been able to go home. Well, Christmas, I think we're, we're planning to stay around here, um, probably uh, get together with a few of the teammates and, uh, you know, celebrate Christmas uh, in Houston with no snow. Unusual. <laughs> well, I'm going to fly up to the North Pole next week there and help Santa with a couple of his gifts. He needs a little extra work up there. So I'm going to go up there for a while and spend maybe a couple of days, fly back this way. Uh, you know, I don't know. I just hang around and... Uh, spend some time with my family more than anything. Probably hang around with quite a few of the guys. Uh, we're going to be going over to Miles O'Connor's the night before Christmas. He's going to have a little Christmas party and really just uh, try to enjoy the good weather. It'll be the first time I'm in a warm weather place. Enjoy the nice weather. Uh, got some family and friends coming down. Got all jumped on some uh, frequent flyer miles and are coming down for the holidays. So uh, maybe do a little bit of golfing, but not a lot. I mean, we were busy playing hockey pretty well most of the time, and uh, so that's obviously going to take up most of my time. I'm going to spend my off time with my family, especially I got a new boring daughter, you know, you have to take care of it. I'm going to call my parents how they are, and that's about it. Actually, we have a lot of friends in from Canada right now, and uh, Christmas time, my sister's coming in from Toronto, and right after my sister, my in-laws are coming in. So we're, we have a house full, and I can tell you right now, our house is just full of Christmas stuff for the kids, and uh, a lot of ornaments around, so we're starting to get into the fever. What are you hoping for for this holiday season? A six and zero run before Christmas time, so I can really sit back and relax, enjoy my turkey. Well, just stick around here. I guess Milo said he's going to throw a party, so I guess we'll be going over to Miles O'Connor's place. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Try and get my shopping done before the 24th. Uh, Mike Maurice, another one that usually waits for the last minute to get his shopping done, but it is 2-1 in favor of the Houston Arrows, and we'll have more from Gund Arena right after this. If you're not getting the low, low Toys R Us price at $34.99 for Fisher Price's Great Adventure Castle, then you should be crowned. Lower prices, bigger selection. Guaranteed. Joe! Wake up, Joe! Wake up! We need you! We're running way behind, and we need the comeback kid to get these gifts delivered on time. Yeah! What do you say, Joe? Sure, but what can I do? No matter how they're delivered, the best gifts come from Mervyn's because we've got the brand names everyone wants at prices everyone loves. Can I buy you some milk and cookies? Stop! Pay no attention to those big city volume dealers and those big city prices. We've been slaughtering those prices for years in Tomball. We have less overhead in Tomball and we're Texas used car headquarters. We have 35 acres of vehicles to choose. And with $2,500 
cash back, that means you, the customer, buy the car $2,500 less than we dealers can. And we'll pay off your trade in regardless of what you owe. Good credit, bad credit, or no credit, and no payments till 96. We're the Tomball Bunch. The manufacturer who supplies jewelry to some of the largest national jewelry stores has chosen Easy Fund to host the manufacturer's jewelry sale. This sales event is offering new jewelry at unbelievably low, low prices. You'll find this luxurious Hugs and Kisses diamond bracelet with ruby or sapphire priced elsewhere at $249. Your choice at Easy Pond, only $149.99. Or our dazzling ladies' diamond ring with baguettes, only $69.99. The manufacturer's jewelry sale is going on now at Easy Pond, and only for a limited time. Class, if you're not getting the low, low Toys R Us price of $29.99 for the little smart alphabet desk, oh, well, then you're a... Yo-yo, 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 yo Lower prices, bigger selection. Guaranteed. Two on in favor of the Houston Arrows, Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay, and... You know, uh, we talked about the fact stamina was going to play a factor in this. The Euros really skated well, but I, I do want to caution folks that it seems like this second period is up next. That has been kind of the Achilles heel all year, and I think that will be the key point in this hockey game is how the Euros come in and come out of this second period. Well, it certainly will. They have a penalty to kill off right away, and that'll take some energy. Of course, they lose Donnelly for 10 minutes because of the 10-minute misconduct. So, I mean, all these things add up, especially three games and three nights. So that'll be a key factor to see how the defensive core holds up. Well, when you look at the highlights, there are a lot of them. In fact, we'll start it off with the Cleveland goal on the power play, but it wasn't Cleveland that scored. Well, Basigio gets a shot on goal, and it's deflected, and a great save by Dauber. But Curtis Hunt tried to clear the puck, and it came off Dauber's pad so hard that he wasn't able to control it, and it went into the corner, and the Cleveland Lumberjacks led it 1-0. Could have been easy for the Arrows to fold, but that, not with this hockey team up is not in their vocabulary. Oh, no, Conroy and Turgeon do a great job, and uh, Turgeon gets a good shot on goal after a couple good moves, and right on the doorstep is Townsend, and he just blasts it right upstairs, and that's Townsend's ninth of the season. So Townsend, as you say, his ninth the goal, but then he decides to do a little assist work, and he helps out team captain Al Conroy. He does. He's in front of the net, and he gets tied up, but he kicks the puck to Conroy, and all Conroy has to do is blast it in the net, and that's Conroy's 13th goal of the season. And the Arrows lead it by a score of a 2-1 to one again, all three are on the power play. When you look at stats, well, 17-10, and they're brought to you, by the way, by Chrysler Plymouth. 17-10, Cleveland out shooting the Houston Arrows. 16 saves for Rob Dobson, eight for Philip DeRuval. Arrows, look at the power play numbers, two for three. However, Cleveland has 2.02 left in that double minor to Gord Donnelly, and they're gonna have to try and kill that off going into the second period. Oh, they certainly are. That's gonna be a big factor in, in coming into the second period. If they kill that off, all of a sudden, they can continue that, uh, maybe some goal scoring, but if uh, let Cleveland tie it up, we're back into that old rut of, of scoring a goal and letting a team come back. I think it's going to be important to kill that one off. The other thing to watch for, I, I thought Mike Stevens for uh, Cleveland had a terrific period. This is a guy, he's a good scorer, but he also is a pretty physical presence also. He certainly is. He does all the things right, but another little stat for you, uh, Christian, that's his, the goal is Christian got a, uh, got was his fourth in uh, four games, so he has a four goal, uh, four game goal scoring streak. So guys like him and Stewart, you're going to have to watch in the second and third period. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Jeff Christian just happened to be the IHL player of the week last week. He's he's a terrific hockey player. In fact, this is a young hockey team, and they're the, they're the farm club for the Pittsburgh Penguins. They've got some bright young talent. We talked about Peter Allen, and uh, uh, Dave is a veteran, but, uh, you know, they've got a lot of guys on the blue line that are terrific. Yeah, they got a lot of young players. You talk about Peter Allen. It's funny, this team has both young and old, not too much in between. Uh, you have guys like Jock Callender. He's an old veteran. Yeah. So is Dave McKayla. McKayla, uh, they're, they're both these guys are played in the in the oh, IHL for oh, odd, 10 odd years uh, maybe more and uh, then you have the youngsters like Peter Allen and, and a couple other guys that, that are up in the rookie scoring so both the young and the old maybe the uh, the old guys uh, kind of leading the way all right it's 2-1 in favor of the arrows second set of 20 minutes when we return when you need an auto part you don't need to search high and low Nine at night, dead battery, had to get a jump, made it to Hilo. She was totally soaked. 89 Jeep Cherokee, no problem. Unbelievable. The Hilo guy even installed it. She could get a battery anywhere. What she needed was Hilo. For four friends. You're leaving me for another woman. Love will leave. The more I look at you, you look like scum of the earth. Love will return. Surprise. Mm. 
love will begin. I hope he's not watching me walk away. <laughs> all right. He's watching. <laughs> and through it all, they'll have each other. I'm 33 years old. Yeah, I still look good. Waiting to exhale. I still look good. You look good, girl. <laughs> yeah. The wait is over. Friday, December 22nd. Over the past three years, Dodge has offered a choice of more new nameplates than anybody else. Here are three more new choices, but they aren't cars. They are three choices that make it easier for you to drive a new Dodge. Choose from generous cash incentives or exceptional interest rates or extremely low lease rates. The Dodge Buyer's Choice Sale. Why would you choose to buy any place else? Back in Gundarina, along with Mike Greenlay, Adam Gordon, 2-1 in favor of the Houston Arrows and the Lumberjacks, led by Philip DeRuval coming back out on the ice, and now Rob Dobson leading his troops. And while we have a moment here, uh, I talked a little bit to Troy Gamble before the game tonight. He felt he could have played, but uh, I think Terry Ruskowski making the right decision and, and trying to get uh, him that one extra, you know, they, they don't play till the 22nd, so give him that extra time off and heal that hip flexor. Oh, sure. I mean, uh, when it comes to pulled muscles, and especially, uh, I, was, I was talking about this earlier, uh, whenever you get a muscle pull in the uh, in the groin area or in the uh, in the abdominal area, it, people don't realize that all your energy comes from the center of your body, and that's where all your extension comes from. So uh, it's a kind of it's a kind of muscle injury that that you use off. You use that muscle quite often, especially in goaltending. And uh, with Troy Gamble uh, or with Dobson playing so well, it's it's smart to just to have Gams uh, uh, take a little rest, you know, and he'll come back strong, and uh, you know, come back strong on the 22nd. A lot of people asking about the arrows on the internet, and I have the address, you can look it up. The internet is just arrows.com on the World Wide Web, www arrows.com And you can go through the arrows web page and look at all the great information going on with the Houston Arrows. While we have another second here, Greener, going through, going into the uh, third period last night, when Terry came to you and said, Greener, you're the man, what, what was the first thing that went through your mind? Well, I tell you what, he, you know, he said, hey, can you go? I said, you know, and, and naturally you say, yeah, I can go. I can do, you know, I can go in there. And uh, I tell you what, it, it's, I've never had to have that feeling before because I've never been off for eight odd months, you know, and it's, it's, it was kind of tough. I, I guess I was kind of, I was thinking to myself, well, the best thing you can do going in there is just do the basics. I mean, just uh, try and stand in there and there. But I tell you what, it's uh, it was a lot more difficult for me than than when I was playing. When you're playing, you're always in a rhythm. You're always in, the, I guess they call it game readiness. But uh, I tell you what, you ask any player that's off, even for a couple weeks, uh, I tell you what, it's, it's easy to lose all those little reflexes that, that really make you, you look smooth out there. And, and I didn't feel smooth. I'm sure I didn't look smooth. But I tell you what, it, we went out there and uh, we gave, gave it a gave it our best effort and, and you know it didn't turn out to, to be the Cinderella story that we'd like it to be but uh, it was still what it was. We start the second period the Lumberjacks on the power play and here comes Dave McElwain from right to left. Well rink wide pass deflected away and it's controlled by Conroy shot back into the Cleveland zone. Lumberjacks defend the goal to our right. Arrows the goal to our left. It is Callender spins one out at center and it's shot back in. By Miles O'Connor. Here it's Corey Foster from right to left. He'll move it up and out at center ice. One and a half remaining in the Donnelly double minor. Clock shot in by Collander. Dobson out of the net this slow. Flipped it along the boards. O'Connor's there and he can break it out. O'Connor just says, hey, we'll shoot it down the ice. It's not going to be pretty tonight, folks, for the Houston Arrows. Keep it simple. Keep the shift short. Let's get in and out of here and hopefully take two points with us. McElwain, center ice, Jeff Christian has the only Cleveland goal. Clock rolls in and we're going to get a penalty on the arrows and they're going to be two men down. I'll tell you what, discipline has been the uh, problem for Houston tonight. This is going to be the fourth power, make that fifth power play for Cleveland and Curtis Hunt looks to be the guilty culprit. Yeah, Curtis Hunt hauled down uh, the uh, Lumberjack player as he was four checking in there and uh, that, it says a well, lot to... It's Freer to, again. Is it Freer? It says a lot to the... Uh, 
uh, Lumberjacks who, who are forechecking really hard and especially now with the man advantage they'll have two men now uh, advantage and uh, you know yeah, I guess a lot of the defensemen or a lot of the players don't like necessarily that, that rule about not being able to hold someone up because that used to be a big part of the game where, where a forward would forecheck and you'd be able to kind of uh, ease them off or, or you know uh, rub them off along the boards and allow your defenseman or your forward to pick up that puck and have some time with it. Uh, now it's become a point where uh, where, where, you, where you have to trip someone like Freer did, and uh, and so I mean it's kind of it's harder to, to give your give your players a little more time the time they want. Collender, Stevens, Lauer, Foster, and Allen. The arrows with just Conroy out there with Miles O'Connor and Curtis Hunt. And the Jacks win the draw. And it starts to Allen. Back to Foster. He's got this big shot. Rolled it to Collender. Jock Collender moving down left circle. Waiting, waiting. Back to the line. Arrows, last time they killed off a big one, it was against Las Vegas. And it was a huge kill in that hockey game. Foster to Allen. Worked it back. Foster, it got through him. It's out at center ice. Foster turning in neutral. Hands it back to Peter Allen. He'll skate it into the zone for Foster. Trying to move it through Curtis Hunt. Not going to happen. Hunt takes it away. Jams it, but right to a Cleveland Lumberjack. It came to Lauer. Poked away. O'Connor can't clear. It's pushed to the near side. Foster fighting for it. Hunt was there. He'll roll it to the line. Not out. He gave it to Collander. Rolls it over the drive. Great save by Dobson. And it's taken by Conroy. Hard off the glass. Came to the near side. Foster held it in at the left point. 14 on the two-man advantage. Foster to Allen. Back. Foster, top of the slot, shoots, stopped in front, and the arrows are going to shoot it down the ice, and that'll do it for the two-man advantage. Penalty is just about over to Donnelly, which was being served by Malgunas, and it's Foster in his own end. Now the arrows have 54 to kill off on the mark for a penalty. Jeff Christian lobbed it into the arrow zone. Back is Laniel. He'll clear it all the way down the ice. Great job by the Arrows killing this penalty. They're really getting to that puck. They have good jump to the puck right away, and that's why they're getting to it first, and they're winning those little battles. Bell off the other way. Shoots it into the arrow zone. Jeff Christian over skates. And there's Rusty Fitzgerald. Back to the line for Dave Basigio. Basigio for McElwain. Has a bouncing puck. Jammed it behind the net for Christian. Watched by Jakes. Penalty down to 22 seconds. Jacks back to the line. Basigio rolled it down for Rusty Fitzgerald. Winding. Jammed it down. Here's the chance in front. Great defensive play by Laniel. He got a stick or actually a leg out there. And it's back out at center ice. He's been listening to too much Mellencamp. Get a leg up. And the puck goes down into the Cleveland zone. It's back down into the Lumberjack, and it's turned around by Fitzgerald. He'll move it across the line, and it is offsides. And the faceoff will be brought to center ice, and the penalty is over, and let's take time out. Three minutes gone in the first. It's the Arrows two, the Jacks one. Hey, don't go away, or you'll come back rusty. It's Arrows and Jacks back after this. Circuit breakers. Check. Window heat. On. Takeoff warning horn. Check. Parking brake. Set. Radio's radar and transponder. Set and standing by. Sunscreen. SPF 15. That's check. Southwest Airlines is going to Florida with low fares on every seat, every flight, every day. Florida has never been closer. Cool shades. There's a simple reason Charlie Thomas will sell nearly 30,000 vehicles this year. Charlie Thomas specializes in less than perfect credit. Hi folks, Brian Morgan. Our all new Second Chance Finance is simply better. It's true, not only do you choose from over 3,000 used vehicles from just 250 down, but you always get your choice of over 2,000 new cars, trucks and vans, nearly every make and model, all conveniently located throughout Houston. Hey, 30,000 buyers can't all be wrong. Experience the difference at any Charlie Thomas outlet today. Sunday beginning at 4, spend six hours of unmitigated holiday bliss. First, Annette Funicello in Babes in Toyland. Then the kids come home for a very Brady Christmas. And finally, it's the holiday classic, White Christmas. The Yule Log burns Sunday night on UPN 20. And of course, all that following Mike Greenlay will be there with Annette Funicello. Greener in Toyland. That's all coming up, UPN 20, right? <laughs> That's a repeat, though. <laughs> well, you know, get it? Christmas, red and green. Greener would only fit. Work with me. <laughs> work with me. You're so tough to work with. Maybe you should get back out there. Take a four, few more biscuits to the head. <laughs> Buck is back into the Cleveland zone. And it's jammed away. Boy, I'll tell you, the effects Mike's picking it up right down in front there as Townsend jammed it for Freer. They battle it on along the near side. 
Skate to skate in there. Townsend digs it out. Graham Townsend with a goal and an assist so far in this hockey game. Townsend working hard. He's roughed up by Pittis. Stays with it, though. Pittis trying to pop it away. Good work for the puck between Townsend and Pittis. And then it's taken away and shot up over the glass and out of play. And Terry Raskowski wanting a penalty. But I'll tell you what, Terry, I got to tell you, I think you should be lucky that Graham doesn't get one either. He kind of had the old hold on there. Well, that was a good job by the referee not to call either yes. one of them. And they, they were just basically that, that that's just good, uh, good hard uh, working hockey along the boards there. Free was in there. You could and, and you're talking about that mic that was picking things up. You, you could hear the mic picking up uh, Freer saying counter counter here. You know, they're talking to each other down there and they're they're working down out well in the corner and Townsend controlling well behind the net. He just couldn't find anyone out front, so they just kept working on it. And uh, good good non call by the referee on both sides because both guys were kind of grappling and uh, you know that's just good hard uh, hard work in hockey. I made the point in our post game show last night. Someone said, you know, what's the difference between a good referee and a poor referee? What we've seen so far, and you know, I said the best refereeing I see is when I can't think I remember I can't remember the referee's name because I didn't really call his name much and even though there's been some penalties called as a shot who hit the goal post that goes wide but uh, uh, when a call is made or when a game is over you just sit there and go you know I don't remember the referee really calling and even though he's called some penalties tonight I think Rob Hearns called a pretty good hockey game now the puck turned around by Jock Collander it's back at center ice knocked away by Laniel and it's shot back in by the Cleveland Lumberjacks stops and slows behind the net Jakes is there, watched by Christian, bumps it along the boards, Yo cleared, not out. It's held in by Kripchenkov, down for Callender. He's checked by Laniel, skate the skate along the boards. They grind it out, it's kicked down as Christian looped it for Collender. He's got Basigio at the point, instead turned it back down for Christian. Christian banks in the right circle. Work done by Conroy. It came out in front, but it's not free. Christian in a battle. There's skate to skate in there, and now it's Rusty Fitzgerald, base of the right circle. It's swept away by Yo, and the arrows are off the center ice. Kelly Hurd overskated the puck. Here come the arrows. Jake's turned it around, but it's knocked away. And the arrows regroup at center ice. Lan Yo hoists it into the Cleveland zone, and Dave Basigio is back. Five minutes gone in the second period. Houston leading it 2-1. to one. Here comes Kripchenkov. Kripchenkov shoots it into the arrow zone. Thompson slows. Back goes Miles O'Connor. O'Connor turning behind the net. Here he'll come from left to right. Loop, loop the pass to center for Vadim Slipchenko. He's going to move it ahead, and boy, it took forever to call that two-line pass. Jeez, any more of that, and he <laughs> had him going the whole way there. Yeah, well, Slipchenko pick up the puck and uh, he raced into the zone, and I, originally when they blew the whistle, I thought it was an offside uh, at the blue line, but it was actually a two-line pass. Or actually, no, it wasn't offside at the blue line. Because they're, they're, where they're taking the face off right outside the blue, and if it was a two-line pass, of course it'd be going back into the uh, into the uh, zone. For but I tell you what, there's a there's a good little shot of uh, if you're enjoying the game on UPN 20 of a goal post. And you heard it ring there <laughs> as uh, the shot came on net, and Eruville's best friend, the goal post, makes the save for him. And uh, of course, that's not considered a shot on goal because the puck has to have had the chance to have gone in the net to, for, for it to have been a shot on goal. That, that sound, by the way, was not the puck hitting the post. I had just come up with an idea. Uh. I had to transfer it down. The puck is back into the Cleveland zone. It's Corey Foster. And it's back out at center ice. And into the arrow <laughs> is that what all that noise is when you start thinking? <laughs> yeah, that's what all the smoke in the press box is. They say smoke them if you got them. And here's, here's a penalty coming up, but I think... Uh, Scott O'Neill's gonna have a chance to smoke him in the penalty box for a couple of minutes. Yeah, I think he got a hooking call there as uh, as he again we we, we see uh, uh, a lot of times you say you don't want to see penalties in uh, in the uh, in offensive zone. There's a penalty in the defensive zone, but uh, it's still not necessarily a good one as O'Neill uh, you know didn't inadvertently he, he hooks. The, uh, the Cleveland Lumberjack player, and then he'll go to the box. And so once again, the Arrows find themselves having to kill a penalty, and uh, Arneal will be the culprit this time. Face off to the left side of Dobson. Arrows are playing with fire right now, though. This will be the sixth power play for the Cleveland Lumberjacks. Pittis with Stevens and Christian. Defensively, Peter Allen and Dave Vesigio. Conroy against Dominic Pittis. And Conroy wins the draw. It's spanked along the boards and cleared to the line and out at center ice. Gord Krupke doing the honors. Krupke, it's going to take him some time to get his uh, to get his uh, legs going, his stamina going. But I'll tell you, I thought he played well last night in his first game back. Stevens shoots it into the arrow zone. Curtis Hunt was there, wrapped it to the line, not out. Oh, it did come out. Boy, Peter Allen made a nice play. He batted that puck down at midair. But uh, linesman Rush Johnson was on top of it saying, you batted it out of midair, but from center ice back in. 
And I'll tell you what, let's see if we have a look for those of you watching on UPN 20. Right well, good job by Curtis Hunt. And uh, I tell you what, he has a better, actually, you know what, he waved that off right away as you see him in yeah. that in a washout kind of uh, motion. And then and then he put his arm up when he, he uh, changed his mind real quick. So a quick call by the linesman. Once again, terrific camera work by Paul Bykowski and top shelf Timmy Sinclair and the rest of our UPN 20 crew. Unbelievable, bringing you the pictures from Cleveland. Here come the Lumberjacks at center. Stevens to Basigio. Worked it ahead to Pittis. Looks in front. Gives Christian the drive. That's blocked. Pittis near side. Knocked away by Crumpy. Behind the net, Christian centered it, and Dobson makes a play and holds on. You know, now Krupke getting into it a little bit with Mike Stevens. I don't know if Krupke is ready to fight, and the only reason I say that, and I'm just cautioning this, when you fight, your shoulder, your arms are at parallel, and you have to kind of, and it's a motion that Jerry Mines has said, at this point, I really wouldn't want to see him doing with his shoulder at this point. Oh, no, not at all. I mean, uh, Krup Krupke's a big, strong guy, but you don't want to see him uh, uh, do anything anything at all to hurt that shoulder. I think it's uh, the smart thing for uh, Gord to do is play physical like he did in that play, knock the guy down, stand them up, Take them out, but uh, when it comes to dropping the middies, let someone else do it for now, and uh, you know you can jump into that in, in maybe a week or so. If I'm the Lumberjacks, I'd rather land the space shuttle on an icy aircraft carrier than try and move Gord Krupke. Here's a shot that came down and went wide of the net, and it swept away, and the arrows moved to the line, not out. Foster held it in McElwain, right point. Watch by Freer, give it to Foster. Foster slides it down, McElwain, turn it back to line. Freer doing a marvelous job. He's got a chance for Yo. Yo's in a race down the left side. He could be in a long short in it. Yo in a goal! Great save by Deruville. Oh, wow! Stacking the pads, and it's turned around by the Lumberjacks. Save of the night from Deruville as Yo came smoking in there. Here is McElwain, looks in front, back to the line. Foster shoots, stopped in front, and the arrows turn it around once again. 22 on the power play. And it is Freer, speaking of 22s, across the line. Freer looks in front. Freer in the corner, trying to jam it down. It came back to the line. More uh, Krupke. Give it out. Here's O'Connor. The shot way wide of the net. It's hammered to the near side. And Victor Gervais is there as the penalty is over. And teams are at five aside. Arneal back out on the ace. Here's the puck shot. Gervais out of the net. Dobson. Slipped it along the boards, not out. Peter Allen, the drive, deflected away. Krupke trying to move it around. And there it's O'Connor, couldn't clear. O'Connor will try it again, and it's picked up by Houston. Lamb, rolled one ahead, Arneal pursuing, but Peter Allen is there, and he fires it along the boards. Lumberjacks have it. Stefan Bergfist to the near side, and it's Allen to center. Lead pass, brought in Bella, poked away, and the arrows turn it around. Lamb at center ice with Slivchenko. Lamb hits the line, steers one for Slivchenko. He's got Turgeon in front. Nice move, looks in front, but he had it poked away. I think Slivy needed about a split second more, and he would have found Turgeon in front. Turgeon was all alone, and uh, Slivchenko tried to make it around that, but the good poke check on the play by McElroy. Hot shot to center ice. Pasigio rolled one out at center. And Jake shoots it back into the Cleveland zone. Here is Basigio again in behind the net, playing peekaboo with Graham Townsend. And it is Belloff sends it back. And it's center ice Kripchenko. He'll shoot it into the zone. Out of the net, Dobson slows along the board, slammed it along the far wall. Ooh, Belloff touched it. I see one, two. Oh, okay. He's trying to come off, but lucky for him that his winger didn't come on the ice form. It would have been too many men. And now we've got a two-line pass to Graham Townsend, and we need to take a timeout. 11 minutes to go. 2-1 arrows. Don't go to town. We'll be right back. Maybe you've always seen yourself in a new Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 185-horsepower engine, improved suspension, and dual airbags. But maybe you've never seen one fitting into your budget. So maybe you'll be surprised to see, for $3.99 monthly, one can. The easy-to-own Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, if you can see it in your head, you can see it in your driveway. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Monday on UPN. Who is he? Where are they? 
Why are these moments so important? No idea? Better tune in. Somebody help me! Think you remember? Better watch again. It's a classic Star Trek Voyager. Then, on Nowhere Man, what is Vale looking at? Why are they hiding? No clue? Better tune in. Get down! Two unforgettable episodes. One unbelievable night. Monday night at 7 on UPN 20. Two, two on Houston, and Freer chips the puck ahead, but the problem here is Yo is Yo gets the puck too deep in the zone, still gets a good shot, but DeRuville comes up with a pad save and a good second effort by Yo jumping at it. He still can't get the rebound, though, and uh, it, the score stays 2-1, but uh, DeRuville getting those big pads up there and stopping Mike Yo. Those pads should be illegal. I don't know, they measure them. Here's the arrows going two on one the other way. Townsend scores! Or it's Turgeon, rather, the left side, the big drive. And Sylvain Turgeon ends the drought of goals. A big drive from the left circle, and the Arrows lead it 3-1. I tell you what, Turgeon has been unbelievable in practice as of late. Uh, we talked about that before. He's been burying the puck in practice, making great plays. And uh, I tell you what, you talked about the way the, way the assists have been going uh, in his favor. Well, now it looks like the goals are as he blasts one five hole on Deruville. Forgive me, you know, Turgeon Townsend look exactly alike too. And it's very easy for me to mix them up. Oh, you're getting those T words well, all mixed up. Yeah, Turgeon's actually maybe an inch taller. That's about the only difference. Oh man, what am I thinking? Curtis Hunt rolls one to Turgeon, and it's out at center ice. I've had trouble getting those two since they've been playing together. And they've been playing so well, it looks like I'm gonna be stuck with that for, the, for uh, quite a while. That's been the line. Terjal, Townsend, and Freer tonight. And the Lumberjacks trail 3-1. 10-19 to go in the second period. Lumberjacks roll one ahead. It's picked up by Freer. Turned as it, turns it around. And it's Curtis Hunt in his own end. Slides one through the neutral zone. But the Lumberjacks turn it around. It's back into the arrow at Curtis Hunt. They pass Freer looking for Terjal. It's picked up by Stevens. Across the line. Poked by Curtis Hunt. Here is Corey Foster the other way. Give it to Mike Stevens. Dropped it for Dominic Pittis. He's got Lauer in front, but the shot ricocheted away from Miles O'Connor, and the arrows clear it to center. 9.50 to go in the second. 3-1 Houston. Puck picked up Dominic Pittis. Back to the line. The shot is going wide as Corey Foster looped it. And here comes Terjean at center. Trying to make the move. Had it tipped away. It's offsides, though. And they'll bring the face off to center ice. 9.34 to go in the second. 3-1 hockey. I, mean, I think we got a penalty coming up to the Cleveland Lumberjacks. I think it's going to be a hooking call. I'm not sure who it'll be against. But uh, the Arrows will go on the power play as it looks like Peter Allen. But no, it's Pittis will go into the box for hooking. And this will give the Arrows a chance to maybe make a little bit of a cushion. They have a two-goal cushion right now. But I uh, tell you what, this could be really big for the Houston Arrows. Like you said, the fatigue factor will eventually come into play probably around the third period. And this will be a good if they can make a little bit of a three-goal blot with another power play goal. They are two for three tonight so far. Face-off will be at center. Conroy with Hurd and Yo. Defensively, Lamb and Laniel. And we'll get a good look at this face-off between Al Conroy and Jeff Christian. Drop of the block, Conroy. He's been marvelous in the face-off circles tonight. Puck shot into the Cleveland zone. Fitzgerald trying to clear. Cannot mark. Lamb's got it. Lamb, top of the slot. Lamb getting set. Winds it over to Kelly Hurd. Cutting in. Center score! Mike Yo! With the goal from Kelly Hurd and Mark Lamb. It's a power play goal, and the Arrows open up a 4-1 lead. I tell you what, that's a pretty, pretty power play goal as the puck is fed from Lamb down to Hurd, and Hurd centers it, and Yo is right in front of the net and tips it in. I tell you what, that line working very, very well together. I can't see that changing too too soon as a good job by Lamb and it's good little saucer pass by Hurd because in front of the net, the uh, defenseman for the Lumberjacks, Stefan Berkvist, gets gets down, but it's saucered over top of him by Kelly Hurd. Yeah, they had him for Berkvist on that one. Puck goes back down into the Cleveland zone. Peter Allen, he'll roll it away to the near side. And move it out at center. Allen shoots it in. 4-1 Houston, 908 to go. Jakes slams it off the boards. And here comes Conroy. Steers one to center. Miss Joe with a pass. And it goes down into the lumberjack zone. Bergfist goes back. Bergfist along the near side. Nearly had it tapped away by Yo. Four goals in his last two games. Whole hump for him, right? 
Are you kidding me? Here is Cleveland now in their own end. Turn the puck over. Arneal two on one. Set it. Oh, great save. Rebound. They score. Mark Lamb from Arneal and Slimchenko. And somebody better grab a wrench and shut off the faucet. The arrows are exploding for five goals in the game and now lead it 5-1. What a great play there as Arneal steals the puck and he makes a great pass to Slavchenko and <laughs> Derulo makes an unbelievable save, but it comes back to Lamb and Lamb chips it up over top of him. I tell you what, a good play by Arneal. He's patient and he just saucers one over top. Uh, Burkfist again, and Derubo makes a great save, but Lamb is there, no one covering Lamb, and he comes in and fires one in there, and that's his fourth goal of the season. I tell you what, the arrow's really coming alive here with goals, and uh, I tell you what, uh, what a great job by the arrows in the last few games, getting a lot of goals and helping their cause. Five in this game, five last night, that's 10, seven in Atlanta, that's 17 goals. Here is Lamb behind that. Sent it Slitchenko, but it was turned away. It shot out at center ice. If you're wondering if Patrick Laleem is the backup, no, he is up with Pittsburgh. And it is Seamus Grega is the backup tonight. As a shot by Krupke is blocked and Besigio is there. He'll romp the center ice pass to Stevens. And Stevens will turn it into the arrow zone. Poked it back to the line for Belloff. Rolls it behind the arrow net. Spanked away by Thompson. It'll go to the near side, Arneal. It came out at center ice. And here come the Houston arrows the other way. Slavchenko across the line. Slavchenko's got Lamb in front, but there was Durillo to steer it aside. Here come the Lumberjacks. Belloff to Foster at center. He'll hit the line, shoot it into the arrow end. Dobson comes out, and Curtis Hunt overskated the puck. Now the Lumberjacks turning. Belloff worked on in the corner by Freer. Knocked free by Jakes. Freer's got it. He'll move it up and out of the zone for Townsend. And Freer now has a chance down the right side. He's got Turgeon in front. Freer shoots, scores! Mark Freer! 6-1 Houston, and I think that is going to be it for Philip Deruville. Well, I tell you what, you'll see Seamus Grega come into the game. He's been recalled from Huntington the second time this week. And he's appeared in 11 games for Huntington. He's 1-7-3 and three with a 4.52 uh, goals against average. But I tell you what, Freer taking this one all alone. And what a great move as he just pulls it to the outside. And upstairs it goes. And uh, I tell you what, Deruville uh, falling back into his net a little bit and just dropping in that patented butterfly style. And I tell you what, great job by Freer. 7-22 to go and Mark Freer. His eighth of the year. Shots are now 19 to 18. And Seamus Grega getting limbered up. I don't know much about Grega as you said he came in from the East Coast League. Well, he was in, in uh, he was playing in the East Coast in, in uh, Huntington. And uh, as I said, he's one seven and two. And he has a 4.52 goals against average. So we'll see how he handles this. They, you know what? I tell you, this is how goaltenders eventually uh, make their start and get their get their start as they come up and maybe have a couple good games. Next thing you know, maybe an injury, and next thing you know, you're in there. So this would be a good chance for him to show uh, what he's got as the arrow, seeming, seemingly getting a lot of good shots on goal and making good on them. Well, and the other thing for Darubal, I know he, he should have had a, he hasn't played that well tonight, but he hasn't had a lot of help either in the second period. The arrows have erupted for five uh, or four unanswered goals in this period but six all together was one nothing Cleveland and the arrows once again with six goals this is starting to look like Atlanta again Jeff Christian bumped by Jinx in the arrow end, and we're going to get another penalty it's a delayed call to the Cleveland Lumberjacks it's rolled to the line and finally it's played and we will sort out the penalties when we return 650 to go in the second period it's 6-1 Houston back after this It has vents in 22 locations, storage compartments in 12 locations, 10 speakers in 8 locations, cup holders in 14 locations, and lights in over 20 locations. So now you know the secret behind the new Caravan's user-friendly design. Location, location, location. The new Dodge Caravan. See your Texas Dodge dealer today. Sony Cup.
Guitar Discman CD player has ESP electronic shock protection, so your music stays smooth Hello. no matter what you run across. Want to add life to any party? Break out a six-pack. The Sony six-disc CD boombox with mega bass, remote control, and six times the music in a stylish to-go container. To get these great Sony portable audio products, head down to Dillard's. to get things going, leading 6-1 on the power play. Slavchenko leaping into the Cleveland zone. They battle in the near corner. They continue to grind it out. And it's picked up by Yo. Jammed it back down. Here is Scott Arneal. Arneal looking in front. Back to Slavchenko. To Lamb. Top of the slot for Slavchenko. Getting set. Lamb lost it at center, and it will back to regroup. Mark Lamb turning it center ice, had it poked away, but it's picked up again. And now Slipchenko brings it across the line. It goes into the Cleveland zone. Arneal left side. Run into by Peter Allen. Here is a shot coming down for Sylvain Turgeon. Turgeon behind the net, stuffs it out in front, but Arneal was jammed into the net, and he's getting into it. And then Seamus Gregor takes a poke at Scott Arneal. And it is controlled by Miles O'Connor to Jakes. Jake's turning in his own end. He'll bring it from left to right. Lead pass Freer. Three on two the other way. Freer had it tipped away though by Basigio. Arrows hold it in. Jake's with 25 on the power play for Mark Freer. Freer trying to center one. It's dug out by Sylvain Turgeon. Turgeon right side. Sends one over. Cross ice pass. Laniel shooting Greg of the save. And he will cover up and hold on. Townsend had dug it out, but the referee, Rob Hearn, lost sight of the puck and had to blow the whistle with 12 seconds remaining of the Jeff Christian penalty. 6-1 Houston, 5-0-2 to go. There's a man that has a goal and, a assist and two assists tonight, sorry, and he uh, is doing a great job on the power play. The Arrows in general are doing a great job on the power play. They're three for four tonight on the power play. They came into the net, or came into the game three, uh, third in the league, but great action in front as uh, <laughs> they're being really tossed around. I think that's Kelly Hurd that gets thrown into the crossbar. No, sorry, it was Arneal. And uh, Arneal eventually gets out in front again and uh, puts some more pressure on the new goaltender in the net, Seamus Gregor. Here is a shot by Tersha, score! Well, he's got the shot ripping now. 7-1 Houston, power play goal, and the route is on. And I'm gonna tell you what, folks, I think the Arrows are gonna be looking for more, considering the fact both games against Cleveland have been routes. Yes, they have, and I tell you what, just a simple play there, Turgeon. Uh, I tell you what, sometimes the simple things work, and uh, Turgeon turns around and just fires it, and it goes through a crowd, and uh, again, Townsend in front, he doesn't get a piece of it, but he uh, helps in the screen department as a goaltender can't see anything, and the puck finds its way through him, and now it's 7-1, to one. Arrows lead it. Clock is controlled by Cleveland. Makayla could center, had it knocked away. And it is Kelly Hurd across the line. Hurd brings it into the Cleveland zone. Behind the net, Corey Foster. He'll roll it, but turned it over to Conroy. Conroy, right wing boards. Conroy looking out in front. Six unanswered goals by Houston. Conroy behind the net, centered. It was deflected away by Malgunas. Pittis had it tapped away. Jam to the near side by Al Conroy. He'll work it down and out of the net. Grega, he'll leave it for Corey Foster. Pass comes to center ice. Stevens hits the line, trying to get through. He's knocked down by Curtis Hunt. And a penalty coming up to Hunt. And the Arrows will be shorthanded when we return. It's the Arrow 7, the Lumberjacks 1. And Curtis off to the box when we return. This is going to be a very special holiday season at Whataburger. Orange and white stripes, great time, come on in. The burgers will be hot and fresh. We're gonna take care of them. The prices will be just right. Feed a whole family of four for under $10 is doing pretty good. <laughs> and as our gift to you, you can get one of these cuddly Coca-Cola plush bears for just $2.99. Polar bear. It's a little good time to spend together. <laughs> good food, good friends. This holiday season, only at Whataburger. What you waiting for? Here's your wake-up call, nature lover. If that didn't work, try this. Now, for only $2.59 a month, get a classic Jeep Cherokee with 190 horsepower, automatic transmission, quadrilink suspension, and driver's airbag. All for only $2.59 a month, including air at no charge. Now, if that didn't wake you up... 
try this. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. 7-1 Houston. Curtis on in the box. Two minutes tripping. And the arrows killing off the power play. And I don't know. I don't know what the delay is. It's funny. When we, when we want to go to break, they won't let us. And when we're back from break, ready to go, they won't let us. All right. They're on their own schedule. Oh, boy. Here's Corey Foster. The shot deflected away. And the puck goes out of play. And Rob Dobson, you know. <laughs> Oh, by the way, it's only let in one goal. It wasn't even his fault. Yeah, no, he's, he's played very strong. Uh, I, I tell you what, uh, when I when I played a lot, I, I found that I played better. And I, I, a lot of players will tell you that. The more they play, uh, the, the more they feel in the groove. And uh, and Dobson getting his third start in three nights, uh, he's definitely he found that groove as he's he played unbelievable in Atlanta. Uh, he didn't have too much help uh, last night, and tonight he's playing uh, great, doing all the uh, making all the saves he has to, and he's made 20 of them tonight. Mark Freer pokes a loose puck away. Arrows trying to bring it ahead short-handed. Arneal, that's knocked back though to McCoy, uh, McElwain. And here come the Lumberjacks at center. Shot into the arrow end. Dobson slows behind the net, flings it along the boards. Arneal trying to clear it. It is Miles O'Connor along the firewall, jammed away by Lauer. They're skate to skate in the far corner. And the Lumberjacks have got it back to the line. And it came out at center ice. McElwain. Ripped it into the Houston Aero zone, slowing is Rob Dobson. And Miles O'Connor just waits and rips it all the way back down as neutral ice. 114 left in the Curtis Hunt minor. 318 to go in the second period. 7-1 arrows. And here is a short-handed break for Freer, but he had it taken away by Peter Allen. He, in all fairness to Mark Freer, was very late in that shift. Comes off for the line change. Cleveland the other way, McElwain to Stevens, got the back, Callender drifting back, top of the slot, here's Allen, the shot ricochet just wide of the net, here's Stevens centering one, that's jammed back, 46 on the power play, it's centered, here's Callender cutting it, it was tapped away, and Dobson's there to cover up, and hold on, 2.49 to go in the second, and a 7-1 hockey game in favor of the Houston Arrows, and let's take a look at tonight's second period save comparison. It's brought to you by Pizza Hut, where Pizza Hut delivers, and Rob Dobson is delivered with 20 saves, and Cleveland total between DeRouville and Seamus Grega, 12 stops. In fact, Grega has, I don't think he has a save. You know, I think i think it was one shot in that goal. I think no, he had that, a, You're right. You're did right. have a shot at the side of the net where he covered it up and the whistle's blown prematurely, but Still, yeah, he hasn't had a lot of work either, but uh, the arrows are kind of looking to put some more pressure on him after they kill this penalty out. Off the face off, arrows have it. Jake rumbles to the near side, tipped one back to the line, held in by Basigio. Trying to move it down. Basigio down left wing, looks in front with 28 on the power play. Puck centered the shot is a broken stick from Mike Stevens. Why'd they blow the whistle? Uh, oh, Dobson, okay, I was watching the stick. The puck trickled down to Dobson. And that seems like the night that the uh, Lumberjacks are having. Uh, everything, uh, some, I know we've seen those kind of nights for the Arrows. Well, now they're, uh, I guess, enjoying the the, uh, the same thing uh, uh, on the opposing side. The Arrows doing a good job in every category. And, uh, and Stevens just winding up for the one-timer. And it just snaps right in his hands. And Dobson, all he does is cover it up for the whistle. And uh, the Lumberjacks haven't really put any pressure on in this power play with only 24 seconds remaining in it, only 2.31 remaining in the second period. Face off to the left of Rob Dobson. Pittis trying to win the draw, and he does to Peter Allen. Drifting back to the point. Watch by Lamb. Give it to Pittis at the hash marks right side. Sent down. Gervais back to the line for Peter Allen. For Pasigio, fakes the shot, jams it back. Allen, puck on edge, wanted to shoot it. Pasigio, he will let it fly. Dobson saves. Rebound as they bang away at it. Comes back to Allen, final of the power play. Pasigio, back to Allen, has the chance. Here's the one-time shot, and that ricocheted wide. Penalty is over, teams at five aside. Hunt back out on the ice. Here comes Arneal. He'll turn one over for Curtis Hunt, tipped it into the Cleveland zone. Hunt comes off for the line change. Greg out of the net, and it's picked up by Cleveland. Stevens sends it back for Basigio, and it's out at center ice for Gervais. And across the line, that's knocked free, and the arrows steer it out at center ice. 1.43 to go in the second period. 7-1 Houston. Paul who? Yeah, okay, Di Pietro. That's right. Here comes Conroy across the line. 
Who would have thought? Here's Conroy moving one in. Stevens away. I think Terry Ruskowski said it tonight in the pregame. He never would have imagined to see seven or 19 goals in three games after Paul DiPietro leaves. And now Conroy getting into it. Yo's in there with Stevens a little bit. He wants to go with Steven. That'd be an interesting bout, but the lines would get in there. You know, you, you, you're mentioning what uh, Terry Ruskowski said, and, then, and one thing he did say was that when you do lose a player like uh, Pete DiPietro, someone who, who's really dominating in the scoring department, everyone else, for some reason, uh, it takes it on to themselves to pick their game up uh, to do that. So, I mean, everyone has done that you've seen some some guys really come alive uh, Freer has come alive uh, really well yo has come alive uh, Conroy continues to play well of course turgeon has got a couple tonight and if Townsend continues to play well you name all you can name so many more players but they're all taking it on themselves to bring this team up to another level and I like to see that especially coming up to Christmas here lumberjacks moving out at center ice they're down 7-1 and the arrows trying to bring it ahead and it's controlled by McKaylick. It's turned ahead. McKaylick in center ice trying to move it through O'Connor. McKaylick right side moving in. Shoots block. Loose puck. And it's controlled by Gord Krupke. Steers one off for Yo. And it comes out at center ice for a guy that's missed 31 games. Second game this many nights. Tell you what. Looks all right out there. He's oh. having a very strong game tonight. Shoots the puck into the Cleveland zone. We're down to the final minute. In fact, we're down to the final half minute. Christian at center. Trying to roll one ahead, but Jakes was there to shoot it into the Cleveland zone. Basigio. He'll move it from right to left. Pass Belloff. Tipped it out at center ice. McElwain steers one ahead. It goes into the Houston Arrow zone. Laniel pursues. He'll turn and roll one ahead for Sylvain Turgeon with two goals. And I think he's got two assists right now. I haven't gotten the official. He was supposed to get an assist on one. They had to give it to him, but I've got him for two and two. Jakes. Right side, Freer for Townsend, busting it on goal. Shoots, it's deflected just as the horn sounds. And the second period is over. Once again, the Houston Arrows scoring a touchdown. I'll tell you, they're loading up on the goal. 7-1, they lead it after 40 minutes of play. Mike Greenlay and I will have more from Gundarina right after this. So what's it going to be, Dion? Football or baseball? Both, boss. Both? Both. Offense or defense? Both. Both? Both. 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 Pizza Hut. Meat lovers or stuffed crust pizza? Both. 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 Want it all? Now Pizza Hut offers our lovers line toppings. Meat lovers, pepperoni lovers, or supreme. Piled high in a stuffed crust pizza. So what'll it be, Dion? 15, 20 million? Both. Both. You'll love the stuff we're made of. At Randall's, we've been putting the finishing touches on everything you need for the holidays. Each year, we make thousands of gingerbread houses, and that's just the tip of the icing. We've got gifts galore, from designer fragrances to Texas wines, flowers to fruit baskets, even Randall's gift checks. And to wrap it all up, UPS package pickup cards and stamps to send it all on its merry way. From our house to yours, happy holidays from Randall's. The average American spends 47 hours shopping for holiday gifts, which begs the question, is it time well spent? At Best Buy, you'll find lots of great gifts. Gifts they can watch, gifts they can listen to, gifts that don't take all day to shop for. Like this Samsung Maxima Zoom with 35 to 70 millimeter zoom lens, just $118.99. This holiday season, save time at Best Buy, where great gifts come easy. with your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Even new ways to save. The 96 Buyer's Choice Drive Away. It's your choice. Drive away in the award-winning 1996 Chrysler Cirrus and get 1.9% APR or $500 cash back. Right here, right now. This is where you want to be. See what's new at your local Texas Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. The guys in the truck inform me that the score you see on the screen is correct. The arrow 7-1 after 40 minutes of play. What has gotten into the arrow offense? I tell you what, whatever it is, I like it. The last three games, they've compiled 19 goals. 
I tell you what, it, it, it all comes down to driving to the net, creating opportunities in front by uh, shooting the puck on net and, and just finishing on the plays. I think I know what it is, you know, during one of the uh, breaks here, they showed up on the big telescreen behind us, uh, John Belushi eating donuts for that member from Saturday Night Live. I think that's what the Arrows had some donuts before the game. I don't know what they have, but whatever they are doing, they got to continue doing that because after tonight, and I know they still have a third period to play, but after tonight, they, they go to Detroit and there's another tough team. Well, Detroit got spanked pretty heavily last night, 7-1 by the Cincinnati Cyclones, and I don't think it's going to be any easy task when the Arrows go in there on Sunday, but at least the Arrows will get a day off tomorrow. They'll fly into Detroit and then get ready for the uh, 5 o'clock game, uh, which will be 4 o'clock Houston time, but 5 o'clock game in uh, Detroit. But I'll tell you what, this Houston Arrow Hockey Club, unbelievable the way they are playing. And, you know, I do, while I have a second, I want to tell the fans back in Houston, it's official now that the Arrows have installed an in-arena transmitter in the summit. So now when you're at the games, you can catch, bring your headset to the game and catch Mike Greenlay and myself. We'll bring you all the action right from the summit. You can hear it, of course, uh, right on 950 KPRC. And of course, Saturday Night on Ice can always be found right here on UPN 20. And boy, this special edition stuff's got me going tonight. Well, I, yeah, and I, I tell you what, uh, when the people bring their headsets to the game, we're not going to be able to lie anymore. No, I know. <laughs> I, I've had them tricked here. Uh, I've had them tricked here for the last little bit. But again, Arrows lead it 7-1. Graham Townsend having a terrific uh, game, as well as uh, Sylvain Turgeon. Anyway, Arrows leave it lead it 7-1, and our UPN cameras were able to head on down to the Aerodrome. And let's take another look at one of our youth hockey videos. Seven one. If you're wondering if that's the aerodrome with no ice, no, nah, just kidding. That's Slapshot Sports, uh, located uh, right right near uh, Richmond Avenue, it's behind Richmond Avenue. But it's seven one arrows, and we'll have more right after this. Gotta goes come in two kinds. Not so good. That too. Has gotta go. And good. Got the flowers, Mark. Now. When are you sending you? Well, for the good kind, Southwest Airlines has gotta go fares from $19 on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. I'm real lonely. But hurry, because the going isn't always this good. Mom, I gotta go! Southwest, the low fare airline. Why is Greens Point Dodge the number one Dodge dealer in Texas? Price and selection. We have the best selection of Ram trucks, including the hard-to-find club cabs, and they're on sale. A new 96 Club Cab SLT Laramie with Magnum V8, AC, and more, just $18,995. And there's more. Here are the hottest new trucks in Houston. These new 96 Ram side customized trucks are also on sale. So come to Greens Point Dodge, Texas' number one truck dealer, I-45 North at the Beltway exit. Is a superstar spokesman what makes Oshman's Super Sports USA? Dream on. Oshman's is super sized and super fun. Why, you can play your favorite sport right in the store. Shoot hoops, hit golf balls, swing a bat, or a racket. Or get your kicks a hundred other fun ways. Think there's a more super sports store than Oshman's Super Sports? In your dreams. The dream starts at Oshman's with 13 Houston area locations. There's a fine line of motor oil separating your car's engine parts that's as little as a thousandth of an inch. But friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporize, weakening its ability to protect expensive parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility, fight vaporization, and provide complete engine protection, no matter what you drive. Add more life to your car. Take it to the stars. 
Arrows leading the Cleveland Lumberjacks by a score of 7-1. We're back in Gund Arena. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. And I, I hate to ask this because every time I do, I, I get it slammed right back in my face. But have the Arrows turned the corner? Well, I think they've turned a the corner in some regards as far as goal scoring and stuff like that. Sure, they have a lot of things to work on, but yeah, they're starting to really mature as a team, and uh, and we'll see how they do in this third period. I think one of the key things that Al Conroy said last night was we have to play 60 minutes. You can't just win a game in one period, and they're starting to do that tonight. All right, well, let's take a look at the scoring summary of that second period, and it was 2-1 after one, and then the Arrows went to town, and that means Graham Townsend setting up Sylvain Turgeon for his first of two in the period. 9-12, the time of the Arrows lead it 3-1. They would go 4-1. Mike Yeo from Kelly Hurd and Mark Lamb at 10-39. And that was a power play goal. It took the Arrows like five seconds on the power play to score. They're up 4-1. Then Lamb from Slivchenko and Arneal at 11-19. I mean, he was out like a lion, in like a lamb right there at 11-19. And the Arrows lead it 5-1. Make it 6-1. Freer from Townsend at 12-38. And the Arrows had a five-lot lead, but uh, Sylvain Turgeon not enough. A little quick snapshot. And he gets an unassisted goal second of the night at 15-04. And the Houston Arrows lead it by a score of 7-1. Well, our topic tonight on Time Out for Good Health is breast cancer. And with that in mind, let us take Time Out for Good Health. Time Out for Good Health is presented by Columbia HCA Healthcare Corporation, a new commitment in healthcare together. Hi, I'm Dr. Eileen King. And I'm Dr. Ralph Sharman. We are on staff of the Women's Hospital of Texas. And today on Time Out, we're going to talk about breast cancer. Most women with breast cancer have no risk factors. In other words, you're at risk of developing breast cancer simply because you are a woman. However, early detection can save your life. You should examine your breasts monthly, have a yearly physical breast exam by your physician, and have mammograms on a regular basis. It's also important to realize that mammograms do not detect all breast cancer, and therefore the physical exam is extremely important. The American Cancer Society recommends that women have a screening mammogram by age 40, Women aged 40 to 49 should have a mammogram every one to two years. And women aged 50 and over should have a mammogram every year. After breast cancer is diagnosed, there are several options for treatment. Radical surgery is usually no longer required. A woman may be treated with a lumpectomy or partial instead of a mastectomy or complete removal of her breast. After surgery, radiation therapy and chemotherapy are frequently used in conjunction. Remember, most breast lumps are found by women themselves, so it is very important to examine your breast once a month. Early detection is the most important key to treatment. Time Out for Good Health was presented by Columbia HCA Healthcare Corporation, a new commitment in healthcare together. Columbia Healthcare partners with 16 neighborhood locations in the greater Houston area. No other hospitals come close. Arrows lead at 7-1. Highlights and stats are next. This weekend, I'm buying the freshest vegetables, nuts and fruits and spices. I'm at Fiesta, so I get the best quality and the best selection. Six Texas Real Star Grapefruit, just a dollar. Medium Headless White Shrimp, $4.49 a pound. Armor Grade A Turkeys, 49 cents a pound. Classic Diet or Caffeine Free Coke, Sprite, Mr. Pibb, Minute Maiden Welches in the two liter bottle for 79 cents. You'll find your freshest favorites at Fiesta. Happy holidays. Announcing Ventures, one in every hundred customer free-for-all. You see, from December 14th to the 24th, one in every hundred customers at Venture gets their entire purchase free. No matter how big, no matter how much, it's all free. Approximately four customers every hour in every Venture store. Tens of thousands of winners, maybe you. So this year, why not try for holiday savings of 100%? During Ventures, big one in every hundred customer free-for-all. It's free. Go for it! Go for the gold! Gold Seal Vehicles from Charlie Thomas. Used cars you buy with confidence. Gold Seal Vehicles. They're the best of the best. With extended warranties, complete brake, transmission, air conditioning, radiator cooling check, four brand new tires, a complete tune-up, oil and filter check, and much more. But just like any Charlie Thomas vehicle, you can buy for as little as $250 down with Charlie Thomas's all-new Second Chance Finance. Go for the gold. Gold Seal Vehicles at any Charlie Thomas outlet throughout Houston. 
Sunday on UPN. Who is he? Where are they? Why are these moments so important? No idea? Better tune in. Somebody help me! Think you remember? Better watch again. It's a classic Star Trek Voyager. Then on Nowhere Man. What is Vale looking at? Why are they hiding? No clue? Better tune in. Get down! Two unforgettable episodes. One unbelievable night. Monday night at 7 on UPN 20. A six-goal lead for the Houston Arrows in the second intermission. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. And, you know, uh, the thing is, is who do you put in goal to, or, uh, when the Arrows return to the ice on the 22nd? I mean, Rob Dobson has been terrific this whole weekend, really. He certainly has. I guess you got to weigh the option between uh, a playing a goalie who's obviously playing well, between uh, getting a goalie back into the lineup and getting him playing again. So I, I'm sure that's why they call them the coaches. Yeah, it's going to be amazing because, you know, the Arrows' next action will be actually Sunday when they take on Detroit. That's going to be a really tough decision. But let's get right into the highlights. And I'll tell you, the Arrows were up 3 1, and then they continue to pour it on as Mike Yo starts it off. And it was a great pass by Lamb, then down to Hurd. Hurd just saucers this one over Burke versus Stick. And I tell you what, Yo just tapped this one in and a great job by Yo. And the Arrows would come back and get another goal right here. And uh, I'll tell you what, a great save by Deruvo, but he didn't have much chance as Lamb walks right in and he chips that one upstairs. And that one made it 4-1. And then Freer down the wing, fires one, or sorry, I mean 5-1. This one makes it 6-1 as Freer comes up and chips it up over the shoulder of Deruvo. And that was it for him. As uh, the next play, you see Terjan taking the puck off the faceoff, an unassisted goal as he fires it, his second of the night. And this is on the new goalie, Seamus Gregor. And I tell you what, he didn't have very much chance. He didn't even see that shot. And a good job by Terjan. Second period stats are brought to you by Whataburger. What you waiting for? Look at the save totals, though. The Arrows with 11 shots, Cleveland with six saves. Cleveland, two penalties for four minutes. Houston, three for six. The Arrows were two for two on the power play. The Lumberjacks were 0 for five. When we return, third period action. The Arrows lead at 7-1. We'll be back right after this. As little as a thousandth of an inch of motor oil separates your car's engine parts, but friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporized, weakening its ability to protect expensive parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 controls volatility, fights vaporization, and provides complete engine protection. No matter what you drive. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. Stop by Texaco Express Lube for a Haviland Formula 3 14-point service today. Your chance to win an ultimate Star Trek fantasy is here. UPN and Computer City want to send one grand prize winner to L.A. to see the stars and get a behind-the-scenes look at the set of Star Trek Voyager. Do the VIP tours, get $1,000 spending money, Voyager merchandise, and a Computer City computer with software. Runners-up will receive a prize package from Computer City. To register, send this information to this address or go by your local Computer City store. For store locations, call 1-800-THE-CITY. You can't make a wrong decision when you go to the right store. Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Even new ways to save. The 96 Buyer's Choice Drive Away. It's your choice. Drive away in the fun to drive 1996 Plymouth Neon and get 1.9% APR or $500 cash back. Right here, right now. This is where you wanna be. See what's new at your local Texas Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. 7-1, Houston leading the Cleveland Lumberjacks as we get ready for the beginning of period number three. Arrows come out with Conroy, Yo, and Kelly Hurd defensively, O'Connor and Krupke, and off the face off Krupke shoots the puck into the Cleveland zone. Seamus Grega stays in the pipes for Cleveland while Rob Dobson remains in the nets for Houston. Puck is in the Cleveland zone, battle near side. Lumberjacks trying to clear Canato. O'Connor the shot and Grega the save, and Corey Foster takes over in behind the net. Foster jams a puck to the near side, and here come the Lumberjacks from left to right. Foster to center ice, and he'll loop it ahead for Jeff Christian. Shot into the arrow zone, and Houston able to bang it out of there. It's Kelly Hurt, but couldn't clear it. Earls back in their own end, trying to play it behind the net. Here is Miles O'Connor. He'll rip it to the near side, and it's taken back by Rusty Fitzgerald for the Jacks. Centered one, it was... 
Christian that centered it, but Kelly Hurd took it away. He's jammed into the boards by Fitzgerald, but the arrows come to center ice. Conroy sliding by Basigio. He'll shoot it into the lumberjack zone, and the arrows making changes. And now we've got a fight at center ice. Fitzgerald and Miles O'Connor have dropped the mitts, and they're dancing at center. O'Connor trying to get one free, then Fitzgerald picked him up and knocked him off, and the rookie, Rusty Fitzgerald, did very well there, but so did the Arrow veteran defenseman, Milo O'Connor. And the linesman getting in there to try and separate him. And uh, you, you look at Miles, uh, I tell you what, uh, you, I, I, last time the Arrows came into this building, it was very physical in that regard as far as uh, fights and uh, after the whistle stuff. And uh, you see that cut on Miles' nose, that was uh, something from before. It didn't just happen. He had a uh, previous uh, cut there, and it looks like uh, the scab got scraped off there. But uh, Miles did a good job in that fight. But I, I, I figured it would turn into this kind of game uh, just because whenever you get a game that's uh, this this far out, it's 7-1 lead right now, I think the uh, Cleveland Lumberjacks figure they've got nothing to lose. And so uh, they'll, they'll just try anything right now. Well, I think if you say this this lead remains the same, I think we're going to see a lot more of this. I really well, do. I, I'm sure you will. And, uh, and again, you, again, you talk about uh, uh, guys like Gord Krupke and stuff. You, you don't necessarily want him getting into it right now uh, because of the shoulder injury. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, guys like Townsend can step in there and, uh, and some of the bigger fellows and, and just take care of things and try and uh, make it uh, as, as easy as possible and just try and ride this one out to a nice victory. Off the faceoff, Lumberjacks have it in their own end. Five minute majors for fighting to Fitzgerald and O'Connor, so there's no loss of manpower. He's in the Houston zone. Gervais couldn't control, and now it is Turgeon off to the races. Sylvain Turgeon, pass picked up for Freer across the line. Freer trying to move in. Freer bumped off the black. Here's a chance, though, for Townsend. Looped it for Freer. And it's picked up for Sylvain Turgeon. Jammed it down for Townsend behind the net. He's overskated, run into by McElwain. And the Arrows can't control, and Gervais skates it out to center ice. Arrows are back in their own end. Laniel running in behind the net, and here comes Mark Laniel. Pass to the right side, Townsend. Booms one out at center, looking for Turgeon, and Sylvain's got it. Turgeon at center, rips one in there, and Seamus Gregg of the save. And Bergfist is back. Stefan Bergfist, two minutes gone in the third. 7-1 Houston. And the Arrows are back. Scott O'Neill. Rolled one to the far side. And it is Gord Donnelly to Curtis Hunt. And it's, it goes into the Cleveland zone. And back is Corey Foster. Pursued by Slipchenko. Puck is shot out at center ice. And Curtis Hunt had a little trouble with it. Had to go back to get it. And he'll roll it near side. But it's McKaylock to the line. Shooting, and we've got an injured lumberjack. It's Oleg Beloff, and now Stevens wanting to get into it with Curtis Hunt a little bit. Well, Curtis Hunt will go off for roughing uh, in the corner there. It gave uh, Beloff a little bit more than uh, than what's required, and he'll go off for roughing. And Beloff's still slow to get up, and finally he does get up just as the trainer gets there, and, and Stevens goes after Hunt. And I'm not sure what, what exactly transpired on that play. I didn't see the final hit, but obviously Bellop's shaking up a little bit. Let's take a look at upcoming home games for the Houston Arrows on the Arrows' home calendar. And there you have a week off after the game Sunday the 17th against Detroit in Detroit. Then Cincinnati for a pair. And then they've got Orlando on the 31st in the Utah Grizzlies, defending Turner Cup champion. And uh, you know what? It just doesn't sound right saying Utah. Well, I think you what. Uh, they may not sound right right now, but uh, I tell you what, uh, Utah, Salt Lake City is a good, good hockey town, and uh, and I hear you have the play. And ooh, that that should be five. Well, you, you're right; it should be five or at least four. But uh, I think the Arrows might get away with uh, a little bit of one here, as as uh, Curtis Hunt will uh, go to the box, and I'm not sure. Oh. Uh, it was originally called a hooking. <laughs> At least that's what the that's, Hook. a, that's a signal that the referee gave. But uh, it, it looked more like a slash in the chops. You know what? Yeah. There's no penalty. There, well, there's penalties, but they're matching. Wow. Well, the arrows got arrows get away with one oh. there. I'll say. Or did they not put it up on the clock here? Hold on here. Maybe they didn't put up because I see one, two, three, four arrows, and five lumberjacks. So it is a power play. They just didn't put it up. Cleveland turning in their own end. They're on the man advantage. Don't ask me for how long because I don't see the time up there. Here's Laniel trying to clear Cannot. Now the puck in front, but Tyler couldn't get a shot away. And Dobson covers up with 17.08 to go in the hockey game. 7-1 Houston. 
You know, it's, it's always, I guess you always want to have a 7 1 lead at about, uh, oh, four minutes left in the game. You don't necessarily want to keep that, uh, that lead uh, or have that kind of lead this early in the game because it really, it, it really changes the style of the game, changes the outcome of the game. And uh, I tell you what, things start to get a little bit rough. And uh, that's what's going to happen in this, uh, in this period. You'll see a lot of rough stuff. Just because Cleveland will uh, try and do anything to change the course of the game, and of course uh, uh, Houston will probably retaliate on anything uh, of themselves. Well, they're trying to sort out the penalty time. It was a two-minute minor to Curtis Hunt, so they're trying to get the, the penalty time up on the clock, and they'll get that sorted Houston out here. Oh, okay, they're just they're saying when there's 15:40 remaining on the clock. Don't ask me to add that up. Greener. I was never very good at math. In well, fact, for a minute there, I thought it was 8 1 arrow. I'm sure the only math the arrows uh, care about is uh, two. the time that's on the clock, and yeah, the two points. Clock is in the arrow end. They are short handed. There's a puck. Dominic Pittis chopped it back to the line. Allen the drive. Dobson on the left. That's Hayden Hill. Hold on. Hold man. What a save by Dobson. I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, so the guys were jabbering back and forth. Uh, Jake's, and I'm not sure who he was, who he was talking about. It was, on the, it was on the bus, and. and <laughs> And someone asked Jake's, oh yeah, it was after the Atlanta games. And someone asked Jake's, how many points did you have last night? And he goes, I had two. You get two points for a win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good line. That was a great line. I thought it was great. Real quick thinking by Steve Jake's. He had a great game for the last two nights, and he's having a nice strong one tonight. He's a wizard. The puck is controlled by Houston. Swept to the line, not out. Eldon McKaylick trying to move it down. It was swept. Again, Laniel trying to get it out of there. He poked it at least out of harm's way, but Mike Stevens is there. Stevens back to the line. Allen the drive, Dobson the save, and the rebound is picked up by Lamb. And he will just turn and scoop it all the way down the ice. It is Basigio. He'll fire a pass out at center for Allen. Rip it into the arrow end. Dobson slows. It'll go to the near side. And Dominic Pittis was bumped by Gord Donnelly. Arrows. Oh, I'm going to guess about 40 seconds left to kill on this power play. They don't have the time up. Basigio to Pittis. Top of the right circle. Looped it down. Mikhailik trying to center it, but it is controlled by Al Conroy, and he'll shoot it off the boards, and Lamb has a chance, but he couldn't corral, but he was late in the shift anyway. Comes off for the line change. Pittis pass right side. Stevens across the line. Mikhailik is in there. He takes a bump from Gord Donnelly. Skate to skate in there. Mikhailik wrapped it back to the line. Here is Pittis the high, high and wide. It might have been deflected, I think. And the penalty is down to four, uh, seven seconds. I do know that. They said 15-40 is when the penalty would end. And there are seven seconds left in the power of play. Next telecast on Prime Sports will be Friday, December 22nd, when the Houston Arrows take on the Cincinnati Cyclones from the Summit. And then, of course, the UPN 20, Saturday Night on Ice, returns December 28th from the Omni in Atlanta at 6.30, the Arrows and the Atlanta Knights. And you know what? You're sitting there going, well, what about radio? Well, of course, you can hear everything on our flagship station, Super Talk Radio 950 KPRC. And the black is shot in, and Gordon Krupke steers one ahead for Arneal, poked one to the line, not out, held in by Jeff Christian, slammed it down for Brad Lauer behind the net, net by Donnelly. Donnelly rusts him up pretty good behind the cage. Lauer stays with it, base of the right circle. Lauer worked in there by Donnelly. Good work along the boards. Collender trying to motor one along the wall. And Arneal is there to shovel it away. He'll fire it out to center ice and back into the Cleveland zone. The penalty is over. And teams are at five aside. Where are they? Yeah, there they are. I was waiting for the fourth, fifth guy to come out there. They said 15 40s when that penalty had ended, and Curtis Hunt was back out. Here's the puck panel behind the net. It's controlled by Collender to Christian. Slides one in there, and Dobson covers up, holds on. Let's take time out. Five minutes gone in the third. Arrows 7 1. And we'll be back after this. Circuit breakers. Check. Window heat. On. Take off warning horn. Check. Parking brake. Set. Radio's radar and transponder. Set and standing by. Sunscreen. SPF 15. That's a check. Southwest Airlines is going to Florida with low fares on every seat, every flight, every day. Florida has never been closer. Cool shades. Let's look at the Magnum Power Sales event one word at a time. 
Magnum, as in Magnum engines, as in Dodge Ram, ranked most appealing pickup by J.D. Power & Associates. Power, overall the most powerful line of truck engines on the planet. Sales, save on 5.2 and 5.9 liter V8s, up to $670, or $500 on Cummins diesel. And event, it's the first time America's hottest pickups have ever been on sale like this. At the Texas Truck Stop, the new Dodge. Well, in case you didn't know it, you know your Houston Arrows are hosting the 1996 IHL All-Star Game. Join us for three fun-filled days featuring a Friday night extravaganza with the 1980 U.S. Olympic team. They're taking on the 74 Avco Cup champion Houston Arrows. There's a concert by Bruce Hornsby in the range. Weekend also includes a charity golf tournament at Kids Anti-Gang Rally Ice Fest and a festival featuring a card show, autograph sessions, and interactive activities. All coming up January 12th through the 14th. Malgunas, nice pass. The check goes right in on goal. And he couldn't get the shot away. He was hooked previously there by uh, Bergfist. Puck was centered, and Bergfist cleared it. I think Slivy uh, did get a little bit of a shot away. He was trying to sneak it between the pads of Grega, but Grega squeezed his legs, and the puck didn't go between his legs. Slivchenko roughed up pretty good by McElwain and Peter Allen, and Slivy looked back and yelled something at him. And now Turgeon turns around at center ice looking for Slivchenko. He's hauled down again, but more by his own guy, Turgeon. Gervais. Tip one into the arrow line, and here come the Houston Arrows. Gord Donnelly across the line, busting it on goal. Backhander stop, rebound, stuffed in there, and Craig made the butterfly save. Now on the fire boards, it came out at center. It's Dominic Pittis across the line, pulls up at a right point. Pittis jammed it for Foster, right in on goal. He's got the chance, the shot stops, and marvelous save, and Turgeon clears it. Hits out at center for Freer and back down into the Cleveland zone. Drag out of the net, kicked it to the far side. It is gobbled up by Mikhailik. Center ice Mikhailik. Rolled it ahead for Belloff. Hits the line. Belloff moving it on goal. Look, center. Dobson redirected it. And it was deflected to the near side. And it is Jakes that moves one to Mark Freer. Center ice, replay pass for Townsend too far. And Basigio bats one ahead. Mikhailik jams one for Mike Yo. And it's turned over. Belloff in, waiting, and he was jammed away. And Dobson with an unbelievable move to turn away and Belloff. Exactly and I guess that's exactly what he did do. He shut the bell right off, and it is 7-1 Houston. That good, good job is a, a good interception by Belloff anticipating on the play. Belloff is uh, about fifth in rookie scoring, and Dobson goes down a little early, but uh, good job by Hunt getting back, and Dobson drives him away. Uh, he's out at the top of his crease, forcing Belloff to come around. Uh, another guy that's having a tough day is Slipchenko. He's getting batted around pretty good, especially in this third period. It's a good, clean hit on the play. Uh, I tell you what, I think Slipchenko leads the lead in playing without a helmet because every time I see him he doesn't have that helmet on I think we should time that uh, that next game to see how long I think his helmet is a sort of perfect sleeper it's spring loaded and the puck shot into Grega and Seamus Grega will hold on to it and 13.09 to go a 7-1 and oh Slivy Terja or <laughs> it's one of those nights folks uh, Slivchenko who, uh, you know, just really hasn't been able to break open the speed. But, you know, ever since the play with Hogwood against Las Vegas, it seems like he's a marked man by everybody coming in. Yeah, well, a guy, a player like that, uh, you know, he, he doesn't play a lot with his uh, physicalness, but and so he does a lot with his stick, and players usually take offense to that and will they usually go after players like that. Also, he's, he's second on the team in scoring. Players will go after players like that, too. So, uh, yeah, he's a kind of marked man, uh, and, uh, as are a lot of the top scorers in the league. Off the face-off, arrows have it back in their own end. It's Miles O'Connor trying to jam one to the line, and it was hit down to the high stick, and play was whistled down. 12.47 oh, to go in the third, the and we'll have more hockey right after this. 7-1 Houston. This is a special edition of Saturday Night on Ice. Maybe you've always seen yourself in a new Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 185 horsepower engine, improved suspension, and dual airbags. But maybe you've never seen one fitting into your budget. So maybe you'll be surprised to see for $3.99 monthly, one can. The easy to own Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, if you can see it in your head, you can see it in your driveway. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. 
A moving cultural document. Plenty of rarities. The Cleveland Plain Dealer. Rock and roll is cool, Daddy, and you know it. Outstanding performances. Detroit Free Press. This is a keeper. USA Today. It made my big toshin up in my boot. An impressive collection of clips and performers. Daily variety. It was a great time to be alive. A remarkably complete trip through 40 years of rock and roll. Set the VCR and watch. Rocky Mountain News. That was fun. The history of rock and roll. Monday night at 9 on UPN 20. 7-1 Houston. And Al Conroy against Oleg Beloff. And it's swept back into the arrow zone. Here's Miles O'Connor. Had it stripped by Stevens, but picked up by Yo. He's got a power play goal in the hockey game. Swings one out at center. And Kravchenkov turns back to his own end for Peter Allen. Allen at center ice. Kravchenkov brings it across the line. Ripped the shot. Deflected away. And oh, Kravchenkov was just hammered by Gord Krupke. Oh, Lord, the boom. Officer Krupke patrolling the lot in there again. And the puck comes to the near side. And it's picked up. Oleg Beloff jammed in there by Miles O'Connor. The arrows romp the center. Conroy moving right side with Yo. He'll hit the line. Conroy gives to Kelly Hurd. Couldn't get a shot away. And it is jammed away by Peter Allen. Back out of center. Curtis Hunt, long shot. By the way, last night Curtis Hunt scored a goal. And we had mentioned it was the first goal for Curtis Hunt. It has now been changed, I found out. The shot that went in that we thought was Hunt and they said was Hunt, they changed after the game. Mal Kunis got credit for it. So Curtis Hunt now officially still looking for his first goal as a Houston Arrow. Glad I got that out of it. Puck is controlled by the Lumberjacks. Actually, the Hunt now has his first goal. But you know what? That's so long ago, it, does, it seems like ages ago. Here come the arrows across the line. Lamb trying to move it down right side. He lets the shot go. Right of the save. And it came to the near side and it's out at center right. Fitzgerald lost it to Slivchenko. Slivy across the line. Slivy looking in. Cutting right in on goal, but he tipped it wide. In behind that, it'll jam to the far boards. And Jeff Christian moves it out at center right. Line is there with 11 minutes to go in the third. 7 1 Houston. It is Laniel. Sends it back to Jenks in the near corner. Laniel trying to move it along the boards. It's picked up by Christian again. Booms one back to the line. Here's the drive by Kurt Christian. There was Dobson to make the glove save and hold on with 10.49 to go in the third and a 7 1 hockey game. There's Al Connor on the bench uh, from uh, the Red Deer, Alberta area. That's about an hour and a half uh, north of Calgary. I'd like to say hi to his family. He asked me to say hi to everybody watching the game up there. I, I'm, uh, it's a little chilly up there. Definitely hockey weather. and. Uh, Conroy really showing well tonight and as, as he has been in the last uh, quite a few games and really leading this team and especially tonight as they lead the game seven to one in the third period face off controlled by Cleveland shot hammered wide Turgeon steers one and it's out at center for Graham Townsend across the line lost the handle Foster is able to clear it out at center ice but he shot it right to Mark Lyon put it back into the Cleveland zone Foster gives to center across the line here come the Lumberjacks McElwain centered one it was deflected wide of the net McElwain in base of the right circle trying to cut in he was shouldered off and we're going to get a penalty coming up to the Houston Arrows a delayed call Jake's plays it and with 10 20 left Arrows lead 7-1 they're going to be short-handed well, I think the call is on Steve Jake's as he took Gervais into the net but I you know I don't I don't know if it was uh, Jake's that drove him into the net or Gervais who just went there himself and after that it was uh, just uh, Jake's trying to get him out of the crease so uh, either way he'll still go to the box and it, I think it'll be for holding or interference and the uh, the Jacks will have a power play as they try and get the check goal tonight. Let's take a look at tonight's third period shots on goal. They're sponsored by the Tom Ball Bunch and they are even up at 28 apiece. The difference though the arrows with seven goals the Lumberjacks with one and that man right there Rob Dobson brilliant tonight again faced 48 shots in Atlanta allowed just the five goals and he has faced 28 tonight and let in one clock is controlled by Cleveland steers one down behind the net Lauer he's watched along the wall and here is Victor Gervais on the power play shoots Thompson left hand save now they bang away at one near side it was Krupke in there trying to muscle one free chopped away by Gervais and it went back down into the corner and Krupke is there Arrows turning O'Connor spanks one all the way down the ice 
Seamus Gregor comes out of the net. He's pursued by Conroy. Now along the wall, it's stripped by Mark Lamb, looking for a shorthanded goal. Base to the right circle. Lamb in there with McElwain. And it's taken back. Foster gives it to Oleg Belov. Lumberjacks have a minute 15 left on the power play. Peter Allen, right side, booms one into the arrow zone. Dobson tried to slow it, came out to the far side, Freer in the quarter. He's muscled in there. They try and jam away at it. And Freer poked one down low in behind the cage. It was taken by Donnelly, back to the line, held in. It's muscled down into the far corner from McElwain. They still have 55 on the power play. Bell off back to the line. Foster, right point, Allen. Back for Foster again, winding, shooting, Dobson saving. And the rebound goes just wide. And another penalty coming up to the Houston Arrows. Gervais on the delayed call. Works one down. McElwain centered. It was deflected in there by Donnelly. And we're going to get a slash on Houston. With 8.57 to go, 38 seconds left to Jakes. And again, Cleveland's going to get a two-man advantage. Well, I think Curtis Hunt's going to go to the box for the slash. Uh, a good thing for the Arrows. There's only 38 seconds remaining in the first power play. So Jakes will be back on the ice in 38 seconds uh, unless they score right away. And uh, then the Arrows will only have to kill off a five on four. But uh, in front of the net, Curtis Hunt gets a little two round bunches with the stick and they'll get, get a penalty and sit in the box. So they'll bring the face off to the left side of Rob Dobson. Curtis has spent some time in the sin bin tonight, but you know, I, I do want to say I kidded him a little bit tonight about the goal with, uh, that he shot in, but I think other than that, he's played a whale of a hockey game. So I. I should at least tribute the guy. He's played pretty well tonight. Yeah, he's played solid. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you play physical, you uh, do take a few penalties. And, you know, that's that's a price you pay sometimes. That, that, that's a good price to pay sometimes. Two-man advantage still for Cleveland, though. McElwain, in top of the slot. Rolls one left side. Foster back. McElwain, in top of the slot. Slides it down. Lauer, two-man game. It came over to Foster. Sends one right wide. Missed Lauer with a pass. And 20 seconds, Jakes will be back out on the ice. And a nice play by Conroy to poke it down the ice. You see, folks, you don't just have to score. Plays like that, and you always look to number 15 to get him when you need him. And he's been unbelievable in the faceoffs tonight. Puck is controlled. Cleveland, right side back going. The shot is blocked again. Picked up by Foster. Ripped the shot, and it was hammered wide. And Jakes is back out on the ice. It's ripped down into the corner. O'Connor and Stevens grapple. The arrows need to clear it down. Jakes meandering in toward behind the net. Puckey was there. Lauer is there. But now it is Conroy turning. Now Conroy. We've got a fight between. Is that O'Connor again? He is going at it with Mike Stevens. And O'Connor looks like he's trying to start his Poulin's chainsaw. And then he's taken down by Stevens. He fought in the second period. And right now, he's back up and I'll tell you what. Miles O'Connor is another one that's had a whale of a game tonight. A big <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> he looks like he's enjoying himself. He really, uh, <laughs> he really fed it well. And you know, when he got up, I, I thought I saw blood in his hand. I thought he might have cut himself. But uh, neither one of them showing any signs of uh, any worse for wear. But I tell you what, a good little bout. But I, I think Miles starts this one as he kind of egged him on in the corner. And, and finally, uh, <laughs> finally he says, hey, let's go. And, so Stevens turns around and the way they went, there was a, a good little fight. Well, they'll sort everything out. There's still 106 left in the Curtis Hunt minor. There'll be majors there. And let's see where they're going to bring the face off. They'll keep it in the arrow zone to the right of Rob Dobson. Boy, look at that. Again, boy, I'll tell you, I think we got the best camera crew right here in Cleveland. Paul Bankowski, top shelf, Timmy Sinclair doing a great job giving us the tight shot there. And it was like they were sitting in his back pocket or something. Terry Ruskowski. Come on, smile, Terry. Well, I think Terry was uh, a little uh, more angry uh, at that, the loss last night uh, for, for, you know, different reasons. But... Uh, I tell you what, his team really came back hard tonight in the third game of three nights and, and a great job tonight scoring seven goals. But more importantly, as I asked him early, uh, you know, scoring a lot of goals but allowing a lot. Well, tonight they did it good in both departments. He scored seven goals, but right now they've only allowed one with 8.03 left in the third period. So a good job by the Arrows tonight at both ends of the ice. What comes back to the line. Here is Peter Allen. Let's a shot go deflected. Dobson. Oh, gave him the glove. Oh, man. Makes the glove save. Pittis 
worked it down. Rusty Fitzgerald cutting behind the net. Waiting, waiting. Fitzgerald back to the line. Pasigio. He waits top of the slot. The shot is blocked, and Lamb just shoots it down the ice. 7.35 to go in the third. 37 seconds left in the Hunt Miner. 7-1 Houston. Puck is out at center ice. Here come the Lumberjacks across the line. It's worked to the near side. Conroy takes his man to the boards, and Lamb shoots it down the ice. What's the line? Houston, we have a problem. We've got a lot of goals. 7-1. Here's the puck along the near side. It's brought out to center ice. Dominic Pittis across the line. Looks in front. Fitzgerald spun off the puck. Picked up by Pittis. Jammed it in behind the net. It came out in front, and Arneal is there. And he turned and cleared it. And the arrows have a two-on-one short-handed break. Now it shakes back out on the ice. It's at even strength. Yo, centered. It was knocked away. Yo turning left side. Getting set. Teetering at the blue line. Yo trying to move it down left side. He centered it. It would hit skates. And the Lumberjacks clear it out at center ice. Laniel trying to steer one away. Yo was there, but now Gervais popped one in there. That looked offside, but play moves on. Christian along the wall. They battle out Gervais. They continue to grind it out along the wall. Laniel's in there. Yo is in there. With 6.28 to go. Good work along the boards. Here is Bella on top of the slot with the shot. That is blocked. And ooh, that went right off Kelly. Or that smarts. That's kind of the same thing that happened to Mike Maurice, except he took his in the, in the foot. Clock comes down, and now we've got Donnelly getting into it with Jeff Christian a little bit. They battle in front of the net, and finally, the puck is cleared to center ice. Krivchenkov with 6.05 to play. Moving up at center ice, whipped one into the arrow zone. It comes to Dobson, and he will slow it for Mark Freer. Freer behind the net for Donnelly. Turned away, though, by Gervais. Came out in front, and the arrows were able to sweep it out to center ice. They lead it 7-1, 5.50 to go. Hero is just content to try and play good defensive hockey and just keep dumping it in and uh, just forcing Cleveland. And, uh, you know, this Cleveland's got a not likely to come back with 537, but the Arrow is just playing it smart and keeping the puck down deep. A shot out at center ice. And here come the Lumberjacks across the line. Bell off to Gervais. Cutting in. Shot went wide in the net. And it's picked up by, and here comes Sylvain Turgeon moving it out to center ice. Freer lost it. Bell off trying to dodge a Graham Townsend check, and it goes back into the Houston end. 9,476, the crowd tonight. Nice crowd. Here comes Turgeon across the line with Lamb, but the arrows are offsides. Delayed call. Arrows need to clear it. And it's finally taken by Cleveland. It's out at center ice. Rusty Fitzgerald across the line. Dropped it back, but he gave it right to Lamb. Oh, man. Here comes Lamb across the line. Lamb. Center for Slotenko hit the post. Had Greg a beaten. And it's turned around. McElwain right side. And it goes into the Houston Arrow end. Far corner Fitzgerald lost it and Jakes is there. It has not been the prettiest of hockey games. We've seen a lot of turnovers, especially by Cleveland tonight. Here's Slivchenko to Lamb. Turns it back. Slivchenko in behind and it couldn't gather it in. And the Jacks are there. They will move it up the near side and up and out at center ice. And Laniel scoops one ahead for Peter Allen. Allen meandering through the neutral zone, poked by Jakes. And here comes Slivchenko. Right side, Mark Lamb trying to get through Stefan Bergfist. And it's out at center ice. 4.15 to go. And the Arrows are going to win this hockey game. Laniel spanked one at center. Goes back into the Cleveland zone. And looks like Seamus Gregg is another one of those guys that changes hands with the stick. Yeah, you flip the, flip the hand over, and that's, uh, you know, it's not something that's recommended, but some guys need to do it to play the puck properly. And it's kind of sometimes a hindrance to a goalie is sometimes you have to play the puck quickly, and you have to flip that stick over. It doesn't allow you to. In the arrow end. It is Dominic Pittis. Spun off the puck. And it goes to the far corner for Gord Donnelly. He'll chip one ahead. It came out at center. Basinjo couldn't find the handle and puck down the ice. You know, you talk about goaltenders that play the puck well, and Dobson does that very well. He doesn't flip the hand over, uh, and, and he also has a, a pretty good shot. And he can skate. He's one of the best skating goalies in the IHL. As Donnelly goes back, and we're going to get an icing call, and we need to take time out. 3.25 to go in the third. Arrows up 7-1 back after this. Over the past three years, Dodge has offered a choice of more new nameplates than anybody else. Here are three more new choices, but they aren't cars. They are three choices that make it easier for you to drive a new Dodge. Choose from generous cash incentives or exceptional interest rates or extremely low lease rates. 
the Dodge Buyer's Choice Sale. Why would you choose to buy any place else? So what's it going to be, Dion? Football or baseball? Both, boss. Both? Both. Offense or defense? Both. Both? Both. 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 Pizza Hut. Meat lovers or stuffed crust pizza? Both. 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 Want it all? Now Pizza Hut offers our lovers line toppings. Meat lovers, pepperoni lovers, or supreme. Piled high in a stuffed crust pizza. So what'll it be, Dion? 15, 20 million? Both. Both. You'll love the stuff we're made of. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, and on Saturday, December 23rd, the Arrows take on the Cincinnati Cyclones in a Christmas wonderland at the Summit. We have Santa Claus, the Houston Youth Symphony, and much more. Bring a fruitcake and receive two $10 tickets for the price of one. Proceeds benefit the Star of Hope Mission. Join us for a holiday celebration. Happy hockey, day, hockey days from your Houston Arrows. 3.20 to go in the third. 7-1 game. And it is picked up by Besigio. And flipped off the glass, and it's out at center ice. McKaylick tried to roll it ahead. And it's turned around by Houston. Freer across the line, looking for Townsend. He let a backhander go. That was steered aside. And Beloff trying to move it along. It was chipped away by Turgeon. Turgeon got it back. Base of the right circle. Looks in front. Gives to Graham Townsend. Three-point night for Towner. And uh, here's a puck controlled for Graham Townsend. And oh, man. <laughs> Uh, the, you know, I, I don't even want to say it. It's penalty coming up to Turge, y'all. This referee waited, I, and he's called such a terrific game, but this one here, he waits about six seconds and then calls the penalty well, after we have the puck. Well, I, uh, yeah, that, that, that's another thing, and that stems back to, uh, well, I know. to uh, a couple games ago where a uh, delayed call uh, wasn't called, a uh, delayed penalty wasn't called when our team uh, touched the puck. And eventually it ended up in a goal against us because our goaltender had come to the bench. But uh, once again, you see the same same thing happening. But uh, this time it, it doesn't uh, hurt the arrows any more than just a two-minute minor to uh, Sylvain Turgeon with uh, 2.50 left in the game. Off the face-off. The arrows are going to be short-handed. And Yo trying to turn one ahead at center ice. Beloff had it knocked away. Yo right side trying to move it. It was knocked away by Gervais. And here come the Lumberjacks. Beloff on the power play across the line. Slam down to the near side. Jakes, I think this is like the fifth power play in the period alone for Cleveland. 7 1 Houston, one and a half remaining in the penalty to Sylvain Turgeon. Here's the puck controlled by Cleveland. And it is out at center ice. Beloff rolled one into the arrow end, and Jakes goes back to play it. Jakes. Off the boards, it goes all the way down the ice. Cleveland turning with it. 1-10 to go. And the Arrows with a six-goal lead. Wow. Puck goes down into the Houston end. Jakes goes back. And this will be icing on Cleveland in the faceoff. Back in the Cleveland zone. 151 to go in the third. 101 left in the Turge on minor 7-1 Houston. There you see Steve Jakes having a, another good outing. You know, a, he's the kind of defenseman that uh, you don't see up in the play a lot. And that's, uh, I tell you what, uh, from a goaltender's point of view, <laughs> sometimes those guys like that are your best friends uh, along with the goalposts because uh, they're, they're the ones that are usually back there helping you. And, and Steve Jakes, uh, uh, off the ice, a very mild-mannered, uh, nice guy. But I tell you what, on the ice, he does a, a nice, fierce job of uh, taking care of everything that has to be taken care of in front of the net. Jackson out of the puck at center ice, still on the power play. Dobson out of the net to slow. Jammed into the corner, Curtis Hunt slammed it off the boards, and it's back down the ice. 133 to go. The arrows lead at 7-1. 40 seconds left to Turgeon. Good center ice goes into the Houston Arrows zone. You know, I'm really surprised this game didn't get out of hand. And again, that should partially be credited to the referee, Rob Hearn. He's kept it in control. I thought he's called a pretty good game. And had decent flow. Here is Slavchenko across the line. Slavchenko a shot, and Gregor the save. And the Jacks turn it around. Collender romping to center. And he'll bring it across the arrow line. Slides one for Fitzgerald as we're down to the final minute in the hockey game. You know what? A lot of fans still here, too. That's pretty good. Pasigio gets it back away. The shot deflected. Well, I think the crowd just wants to see a, a goal here. Here's the drive by Pasigio and Dobson. A nice sweeping glove save, and he will hold on with 46 seconds to go, and the Arrows lead at 7-1. And that's one thing Dobson is good at doing, is following the puck through the crowd. I mean, uh, you get a slap shot from the point like that, 
A lot of screening front. He gets down in that butterfly and he covers a lot of ice and picks up the puck. Uh, on the other end of the ice, you have Grega. And I'm not sure. I, I think this is his first IHL game. He doesn't have any stats as of yet. And, and uh, you know, he, he's done not too bad tonight. Made a couple of, a couple of saves and uh, had a couple go by him. But uh, all in all, a pretty good effort by uh, Seamus Grega. Actually, he's had just the one at Turgeon. They pulled the. Uh, Here's a shot by Townsend. I almost had to eat my you're, words there. You're right. You're right. Uh, I, I just took one of the goals as being one of them on him, but he only did let one, and that was a Turgeon goal. Puck is in the Cleveland zone. Down to 25 seconds. Arrows Turgeon fighting for it. Turgeon trying to move it out in front. Mike Stevens is there. And he'll skate in behind the net. Stevens trying to move one out of there. Arrow is still forechecking very hard right now. 13 seconds left, and the puck shot back down into the arrow end. Jakes is there with 10 seconds. Definitely a 60-minute game tonight. No doubt. They, they definitely worked the Oshman's game plan to a T. Two seconds left, and the Houston Arrows have won the hockey game by a score of 7-1. to one. Now Stevens looking at Krupke a little bit. And I think, you know what, the linesman and the referee do a really good job here to separate everything, and everyone goes down to congratulate Rob Dobson, who picks up his first win in this building. And there, there's that smile you're looking for on uh, Terry Raskowski's face. Gets a handshake from Dave Tippett, but there's the man, the Dobber. Getting the win, and the arrows go on for a 7-1 victory. That is now uh, 19 goals in three games. It's a lot of a uh, lot of pucks in the twine for the Houston Arrows. So 7-1 the final, and when Mike Greenlay and I return, we'll have some final thoughts from Gundarina back after this. By Dodge. By G. Beagle and by Whataburger. Back in Gund Arena, Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay, a 7-1 final in favor of the Houston Arrows. And Greener, let me just read some of these numbers off to you. We're hopefully going to talk with Sylvain Turgeon tonight. He had a good game tonight with two goals and one assist. But how about, and these are the unofficial numbers, by the way. Graham Townsend, a goal and three assists. Uh, Mark Lamb, a goal and an assist for two points. Al Conroy, a goal assist for two points. But it is time for our Southwest Airlines just plain smart play of the game. And it is Sylvain Turgeon with that quick release. Well, I tell you what, he gets the puck right off the draw and he just does a little spinorama and he just fires the puck on net. And that's where you get your goals is by shooting the puck on net. It finds a, finds a hole and that made it 7-1. to one. Houston with the win, now 12-21-2. And their road record goes to seven, eight, and two. And uh, I'll tell you what, you know, the Arrows really put forth that 60-minute effort tonight. And I think that is something that Terry Raskowski, Dave Tippett, Pete Deneen have been looking for. And, uh, you know, again, I, I was telling you about the numbers. If Graham Townsend, a goal and three assists, that's a career night for him. Well, it certainly is. And, and he's, he's, been al he's been alive for, uh, you know, really come alive uh, in the last, last, oh, I don't know, 10 games he's really done well and 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 you know like like, like we talked about earlier when you get to, when you lose a player that uh, that was doing the job for you uh, offensively everyone else seems to come in and, and help out and I tell you what that that says a lot about this team let me ask you a question could it be that Paul DiPietro comes in the way he did and he was such a volatile offensive guy the guys maybe were relying on him too much as far as offense goes sometimes that happens when you get a guy that's really uh, doing it right for you and uh, yeah you sometimes say well uh, we can always count on him to get us one or two goals and, uh, and sometimes sometimes that happens but I tell you what uh, the arrows have shown that talent that everyone says that they have and uh, finally we're starting to see a lot of it and it's coming in bunches right now I think we're starting to see that team that was on paper if you remember that was that was the big term we were using at the start of the year and I think you're starting to see it I, obviously the arrows tonight play a very strong defensive game allowing just the one goal uh, but I still think that there are some question marks defensively for the Houston Arrows. I mean we got to keep things into perspective folks they did give up before tonight they gave up 12 goals in their last two games seven to Kansas City last night two nights ago they gave up five to the Atlanta Knights and their defensive zone coverage was one of the big crucial things and and uh, they took care of it tonight but I know they played Detroit on Sunday which will be a good gauge of where things are at but then the Arrows have a three or four days off before they're back at home and I think they can sort some things out in practice there. You know what I think the big key is going to be is when uh, when the arrows uh, defensemen start coming back the uh, <laughs> we got attacked That's by a it. sign right there. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there but uh, you know what I think it was almost two injuries to the broadcasters but I tell you where when the injuries uh, come back from uh, for the arrows uh, I think I think 
there's going to be a real competition in, in that defensive core, and you're going to see a real strong, stronger defense, uh, defensively. I think the Arrows have done a pretty good job tonight, and uh, you'll see an even better job when that competition comes up. All right, and it's time for our Texaco star of the game, and he was also our, he had our play of the game. It is Sylvain Turgeon who finished with two goals and assist tonight. How about those two goals? I mean, we saw the, the turnaround snapshot, but what we didn't see was the one he had busting down the left side when he ripped the shot by Philip Deru. That thing was humming. Yeah, and, and the guy on his wing was uh, a Graham Townsend. They came down on a, a two-on-one, and, and he just let one smoke. And, and uh, Terjean does possess a really hard shot, and he's finally starting to, to use it, and, uh, and, you know, it's starting to pay dividends for him. You know, and, and you looked, it was such a balanced attack tonight. Mike Yo had a power play goal. Al Conroy, a power play goal. I mean, the power play came to life tonight, but the Arrows were getting a balanced attack. And, I mean, folks, this is scary. I mean, this is what Pete Deneen really thought he had put together. And, uh, you know, maybe the loss of Di Pietro, as you say, perhaps is what it needed to get these boys going. We'll have some final thoughts when we return. It is 7-1. That's the final. Arrows win it. Back after this. Arrows win tonight over the Cleveland Lumberjacks 7-1. And while we have a minute, Mike, let's uh, look at some scores around the IHL tonight. Atlanta at home uh, leading Indianapolis 2-1. That's at the end of the second period. At the end of the first period, Orlando at Chicago leading 3-2. Uh, uh, let's see, at the end of the second period, Cincinnati, Michigan tied at 1. Also at the end of 1, Michi Minnesota and Peoria are tied at 1. And in the middle of the first period, Kansas City is in Utah. That is no score. Phoenix is at Las Vegas, San Francisco at Los Angeles, and Milwaukee is at Fort Wayne. We have no scores out of those. Let's take a look at tonight's final stats. They're sponsored by your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. 34-30, the final shot totals tonight. 33 saves tonight for uh, Rob Dobson. 23 saves for both Philip DeRuville um, and Seamus Grega. Four for five on the power play tonight for the Houston Arrows. And we have Sylvain Turgeon standing by. Two goals and an assist tonight, Sly. And I know we've talked quite a bit as of late. You were kind of snake bitten by not scoring some goals. It must feel good to get them back tonight. Certainly feels good. I was, I've been getting some assists, but as you know, the, the snipers supposed should score goals. And the towner has been scoring some goals, so I've been feeding him. But obviously tonight uh, I had a few opportunities and they went in and uh, I think that, uh, you know, I had some good shots previously, but they didn't go in. Tonight they did. So I, I think it's going to help to build my confidence up too. You know, uh, Sly, I, rem I, can, I remember in practice the last week, uh, you, you really seemed to work hard in practice. you think that what's what maybe turned it around a little bit? Because well, I tell you what, I, I, was on the, I was on the losing end of a lot of those shots that, Well, as this you week. know, our team, uh, you know, we had a big meeting, uh, all the players, uh, quoting about their, talking about the coaching staff and everything. Uh, it, it comes from the top, and the player has to make him committed. And in practice, I don't think we we had the everybody was committed, and we did we did have better practice. Everybody was concentrating what they had to do, and it reflects the way I think we've been playing the last three games. And even if we lost last night, I think the, the last three games we play much better style of hockey. Uh, we we had plays that we're coming out of our zone where we're doing it, and we're everybody is concentrating concentrating what they're doing. I think it pays off right now. You know, lately, uh, in fact, probably the last two weeks, you've been skating with Mark Freer and Graham Townsend. Uh, do you like that line? I mean, it seems like it's working for you guys. Yeah, it's a fast line. Uh, as you know, Tanner is big and strong. He uses body down the corners. Uh, he seems to uh, stay more on the higher in the slot. And Fursey is typical. He goes and sneaks <laughs> around and picks everybody, try to pick up the puck. So I think it works pretty pretty good, three of us. So we're, we're just going to keep, uh, keep it good. Keep yeah. working at it. The other thing I wanted to ask you, Sly, is, you know, here you are. You've scored 19 goals in your last three games, and that's after Paul DiPietro left. I mean, can you explain that? Well, I don't think uh, it's because of Paul. Uh, I mean, uh, I certainly said to myself, Paul's gone. Uh, uh, let, let's, let's everybody uh, pick up the slack, but I'm not the only guy. I think everybody uh, did last few games, and uh, we, we have to be, like I said, it's, it's a whole team. Uh, you know, commit commitment. So, uh, and Paul, uh, obviously, you can't take anything away. At clutch time, uh, you saw that he was able to get some important goals for us. So, obviously, we, uh, you know, we we're missing him. But uh, I'm sure that we're going to have to work without him and uh, do the best we can. Sly, congratulations, two goal and assist. You are Texaco star of the game. Thank you, and a nice win tonight. All right, thanks, Adam. Sylvain Turgeon joins us here as the Arrows win it by a score of seven-one. We wrap it up after this.
Everything's new at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Even new ways to save. The 96 Buyer's Choice Drive Away. It's your choice. Drive away in the award-winning 1996 Chrysler Cirrus and get 1.9% APR or $500 cash back. Right here, right now. This is where you want to be. See what's new at your local Texas Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Waiting for a breakthrough offer on Panasonic products from Best Buy? Here's one that'll blow you away. Make no payments and pay no interest until January of 97 on any combination of Panasonic and Technics products at Best Buy. An offer like this, along with Best Buy's prices, makes it even easier to get your hands on all of Panasonic's breakthrough technology, including possibly a new television. Startling new. Now even the skinniest person can be Santa. All you need now is a telephone and some holiday spirit. This is the greatest Christmas ever. Get everyone on your list just what they want. Great music. Dial 1-800-MUSIC-NOW today and sample the hottest music. I used to like Halloween more than Christmas, but that was before 1-800-MUSIC-NOW. That's 1-800-MUSIC-NOW. That's 1-800-MUSIC-NOW. There's a simple reason Charlie Thomas will sell nearly 30,000 vehicles this year. Charlie Thomas specializes in less than perfect credit. Hi folks, Brian Morgan. Our all new second chance finance is simply better. It's true, not only do you choose from over 3,000 used vehicles from just 250 down, but you always get your choice of over 2,000 new cars, trucks and vans, nearly every make and model, all conveniently located throughout Houston. Hey, 30,000 buyers can't all be wrong. Experience the difference at any Charlie Thomas outlet today. It's a final 7-1. The Arrows have defeated the Cleveland Lumberjacks. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, just to kind of wrap up the final thoughts on Sylvain Turgeon, it's good to see him back in the goal column with those two goals. And as he said, he's also playmaking now. Well, yeah, he is. And, and the thing is, when he wasn't getting those goals, it was a little frustrating for him. I mean, uh, he's got, he possesses a very good shot, and he was firing him at the net. He was taking his shots, but he wasn't getting any goals. Now he might be off to the races. It's, it's going to be good to see. Greener, thanks for your help. Thank you. All right. The executive producer and director of... Uh, Houston Arrows Hockey is Paul Baikowski. Tonight's game has been produced by Top Shelf Tim Sinclair.